David Steele, Nat Moore, Steve Babick with you from the University of Florida campus. Set out number 104 in a row here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. George O'Leary, the 60-year-old veteran head coach of UCF in his third year with the Golden Knights, his 11th year overall as a head coach, and has brought uh, this program to a level of great respectability in just his third year as head coach of the Golden Knights. Uh, a football team on the move, and Urban Meyer, the head coach of the Gators, has had nothing but respectful words for O'Leary and the Golden Knights all week long. And that sometimes uh, those things may, might not mean anything, but I think Meyer really means what he says here this week. Well, he looks at uh, O'Leary as one of the great minds in college football, and you know he's proven that going 0 and 11, and then last year coming back and winning the Eastern Division of the uh, USA Conference. Yeah, he's done a great job. Uh, likewise, Urban Meyer. Let's go to the field and Steve Babick. And uh, does Steve get an update on what Urban Meyer is looking for his team to accomplish here today? Well, thanks, David. Obviously, the most important checklist is the one by the head coach. When Urban Meyer reviewed that Southern Miss victory, here were some of his points. The first thing that jumped out to him about the pass rush, no sacks against Southern Miss. With that front four, he expects a lot more than that. The ground game, it had moments, but once Deshaun Wynn left the game, it almost seemed non-existent. He needs to see a lot more from the ground game. The return game, now there was only one kickoff return. It was just nine yards, but it wasn't well executed, and he wants to see a lot more improvement in the return game. The offensive line overall, he thought it played well, but they really have to improve, especially with making holes for the runners. And special teams tighten up. There was that one extra point when Eric Wilbur bobbled the snap. That can't happen, said Urban Meyer. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thank you, Steve. And uh, the Gators taking the field. We're almost set for week number two. The Gators knocked off Southern Mississippi from UCF's conference, Conference USA, last week. That was a 34-7 game. Meanwhile, UCF was playing at home against Villanova and uh, did not play as well as they certainly would have liked. They struggled against the Division I AA club, but won it going away at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. There's Kevin, or rather uh, returning for the Golden Knights is uh, Curtis Francis. He's one of the backs, along with uh, Joe Burnett. But Francis, the main guy, Vincent, number 45, back there as well for UCF. And the Gators will kick off to start the game. As the sellout crowd continuing to file in here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. And here we go from Gainesville. It's going to be Vincent running it back and then fumbling it out of bounds at the five-yard line. So maybe a little case of uh, the jitters here to start this game. Jason Vinson mishandling that kickoff and fumbles it out of bounds at the five. Well, good kick by the Gators as they kick the ball down the deep right side sideline and Vincent not able to handle the kickoff, fumbles it out of bounds. It's called a muff, David. Not a fumble, it's a muff. And he muffed it and it gives Moffitt very <laughs> poor field position. There's the young quarterback out of Winter Park. And his offense backed up at the five-yard line. Moffitt rolling out and throwing it incomplete. His receiver was out of bounds. And it wouldn't have been completed even if he had caught it. That's Joaquin, the intended receiver, Sergio Joaquin. And let's check out our starting lineup presented by Checkers, official burger of the Florida Gators. This offensive line, the most experienced returning offensive line in college football from a year ago, Mike Walker is the big playmaker at wide receiver number 11, a senior out of Orlando. And that's Walker split wide to the left on second down and 10 for UCF. Smith runs very well between the tackles. That time he pounds out a couple of yards to about the seven yard line. Florida's defense, the front four back in tack. Marcus Thomas back in the starting lineup, joining McDonald, Cohen, and Jarvis Moss. The linebackers uh, about as good as you get in college football, led by Siler and Everett. And the secondary played extremely well last week. Tony Joyner, in particular, rated out very high and was named the team's defensive player of the week in that win against Southern Mississippi. Third down and eight. Moffitt has good protection. And his pass is caught by Rocky Ross out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And a first down for the UCF Golden Knights. Now let's check out tonight's keys to the game. Brought to you by Chevrolet, America's number one brand, number one value. 
Well, for the Golden Knights, they want a balanced attack. They've got to be able to run the football to set up the pass. And on, on uh, defense, they need some turnovers. They need to be able to take the ball away. The Gators looking to improve their running game. Didn't run the ball effective last week. And then they'd like to get more pressure, get some sacks. That time, Muffin had plenty of time to throw the football, David. Well, good protection, you're right. And uh, throwing on that third down play from near the goal line, a gutsy throw by Stephen Moffitt, the senior. And Kevin Smith able to pick up a couple of yards on first down. There's uh, the look at Moffitt, 15 for 20 last week in their win against Villanova for just under 200 yards. George O'Leary, an outstanding uh, job he has done in building this football program a bowl team a year ago they went to the Hawaii Bowl and lost in overtime to Nevada this is Smith again and the Gators uh, swarming him near the line of scrimmage that's Brandon Siler in on that tackle Brandon Siler you'll see him right here I watch him just come off his block good job getting off his block trying to get in there but Marcus Thomas already showing his effect of being back in the line of scrimmage he comes from his nose tackle position straight down the line of scrimmage getting in, getting in on the tackle and Marcus Thomas just an incredible athlete and the Gators certainly missed his presence last week against Southern Mississippi had no quarterback sacks had not enough pressure against the Southern Miss quarterback third down high snap Moffitt wisely Falls on the ball back at the six yard line. That could have been a huge play, but uh, Moffitt is able to recover the fumble. There is a flag on the play. Here's another look at it. Just an errant snap by Gagne Marcou as he snaps the ball over the arms of the 6 3 quarterback. I think, David, the, we, we might have been able to use Joe Kim out there, and he still wouldn't have been able to get that one. No, I don't think. Any of those Gator basketball players would have been able to reach up and snatch that one. We have a penalty. From the previous stop, we play third down. Marked off against UCF. Look at the Gators right now, defensive line. They've got three defensive ends in there, Harvey, McDonald, and Moss. They're really trying to turn up the pass rush. Well, they got a chance to rush Moffitt again. After the five-yard penalty from the previous spot, Moffitt fumbled that snap a bit, steps up and throws a strike over the middle of the field, and the Golden Knights pick up the first down at the 35-yard line. Nicely done by Moffitt after he fumbled that snap, but threw a bullet to Willie Thornton for the first down, a 21-yard pickup. And, David, this is, watch this offensive line. You're going to get no pressure. He's able to step up. Good clean pocket to throw to. Nice job by Thornton of going up, catching the ball in his hands as the ball's a little bit behind him, but you know, outstanding execution by the offensive line. First and 10. Toss sweep. Nice uh, room on the edge for Kevin Smith, and he picks up 10 or 11 yards to pick up a first down near midfield. At that penalty against the Gators that gave UCF an opportunity to pick up the first down must have been uh, an illegal motion or it was, something before the snap. Yeah, yeah David, it, it was an illegal motion, but just a quick pitch to Smith. Good blocking outside. They crack back on the uh, Sam linebacker. This allows him to get the short corner, and Smith gets outside for big yardage. But the penalty helped uh, the Golden Knights in the end, and they've got it first down again at their 47. Smith is hit behind the line of scrimmage and then driven down by Bryant Crum. He was hit first by Derek Harvey, number 91, and, and then Crum finished him off. And David, and, and for our viewers at home, let, going back to that penalty, you know, anytime there's a pre-snap penalty, the play is automatically dead, and that's why the snap over the center, over the quarterback's head didn't matter, that it was just a dead ball, five-yard penalty, and it kept the drive alive. Big Gators, break. Gators did not have an option to, to decline that penalty. Automatic. Certainly they would have. Second and 11. Moffitt setting up the screen very nicely to Smith, but look at Reggie Nelson come flying across the field and make the stop in the open field. A loss of two yards. Nelson showing why he is one tough playmaker for that Gator defense. And David, this is all about reading your keys. Right here, you see Nelson to the left side of the screen. Now watch him coming into the pitcher. Gets out there before Marcou could get to him. Gagne Marcou, the big center, all-American. All Everybody's all-American, all-USA conference. Nelson 
Beat him to the punch. Got there before he could get his block made. Another big third down play. UCF, this drive started at their five-yard line. They picked up a couple of first downs. And Moffitt throwing over the middle again, and it is caught again, this time by Mike Walker, their go-to receiver. But it looks like he is one yard short of a first down. And, David, these are big receivers. Uh, Walker is 6'2". Joaquin, uh, Sergio Joaquin is 6'5". And this ball, every ball has been up in the air. Nice job of getting rid of the ball. Gets a little pressure there. The Gators have got to do something to reroute these receivers, force Moffitt to hold the ball a little bit longer. Right now, he's throwing everything on rhythm and completing it. I don't see a punter in the game for UCF. It looks like they will go for it on fourth down and a long yard at the Florida 45-yard line. They line up in the eye. Kevin Smith, the eye back. Jason Peters, the fullback. And a flag before the ball is snapped. The, I think the clock might have gotten them, and they're going to be penalized five yards. We have to play clock is down to zero. Right David. to the snap. Delay a game, number nine, on the offense. Five-yard penalty. We play fourth down. That, you, su right. you surprised that they were going to go for it on fourth and one because George O'Leary, normally a, a bit conservative and likes to play that field position. And well, they got a rhythm right now. Everything's going yeah. their way, and you don't want to punt it away when you got a chance. You, you know, if you make the first down, you keep that explosive Gator offense off the football field a little bit longer. All right, Allen Horn back to punt. Reggie Nelson stands deep. And a low kick that hits at the 20, takes a Florida bounce. And the Golden Knights down the ball right around the 20-yard line. Well, that's where Chris Leak and company will take over after the 33-yard punt by Allen Horn. Immediately following every Florida football game, don't miss the Geico Gator post game on Sun Sports. Sun Sports picks up where the network leads off by giving viewers exclusive extended post game Gator coverage. UCF Golden Knights picked up three first downs on their first possession. Florida, after a 28 yard punt by Horn, ball spotted at the 21 yard line, and that's where the Gators take control. Senior quarterback Chris Leak. Last week threw for 248 yards on 21 of 30. And three touchdowns. Leak will throw on first down to Jamel Cornelius. He got a terrific block from Caldwell. And another one downfield, uh, I think from Ingram. And picks up 17 yards on the play. That was Percy Harvin downfield. Oh boy, he, he got a couple of good blocks. It was Ingram. Cornelius Ingram with the second block. Nat, you love to see those wide receivers block downfield, don't you? Well, and, and, that, and that's what it's about in this offense. Those receivers blocking for each other because there's going to be a play when all of a sudden you've got uh, Jamal Cornelius doing the blocking and Percy Harvin's running with the football or uh, Andre Caldwell. You name it. You know, they like to spread it around here. Hands off to Deshaun Wynn, banged up last week, but stutter stepping through the middle of the line and picks up excellent yardage, but there is a flag on the play. Kyle Fowler made the stop. And it's going to go against the Gators. Starting lineups brought to you by Checkers, official burger of the Florida Gators. Let's check out Florida's offense. The offensive line graded out quite well last week. Despite uh, all new starters in there, with the exception of Steve Rissler, they had a number of starts a season ago. Backs and receivers, a very talented, explosive group. Jamel Cornelius, who had that first catch tonight, uh, is a guy that the Gators want to get the ball to more. Dallas Baker had nine catches last week against Southern Mississippi. And this holding penalty, very costly, because instead of a, another first down up near midfield, it'll be first and 20. And the ball is back at the 31-yard line. And Leak hands off once again to Deshaun Wynn. And he picked up two yards to the 33. UCF's defense. Last week, they had their problems with Villanova. Let's take a look at their line. Led by Duzable and Shulligan in the middle. Welsh and Okamore on the outside. They're linebackers. Last week, Hogue had 11 stops against Villanova. 
And their secondary, the strength of their defense, led by Joe Burnett, one of the top freshman defensive backs in college football a year ago. Uh, five interceptions last year, and also uh, one of the top punt returners in the country, returning two uh, punts for touchdowns. Pressure coming from the outside. Leak steps up and runs it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Leak uh, not known for his uh, running ability, but when pressed to do so, is very capable. Well, we saw Chris do a lot of this. Now you'll see the pressure coming up there. He spots it right away. He sees the gap. He takes off and he tries to get as much as he can then gets down. You know, good run on second down gives himself a good third and medium situation with the Gators to handle. Chris Leak, his numbers from uh, last week, making his 35th start consecutively for the Florida Gators. Big third down play on the Florida 41-yard line. Three receivers to the left. Leak standing tall in the pocket, very calmly finding Harbin and the freshman exploding down the left sideline. Percy Harbin, touchdown Florida. Is this kid a playmaker or what? And David, you gotta, you gotta love this young kid, Percy Harbins. But you also, we talked about a couple plays ago, the blocking of the receivers downfield. I hope when we get a chance, we'll go back and look at the key block thrown by the receiver to spring their counterpart, Percy Harbin, as he goes 58 yards for the Gators' first touchdown of the day. And Hetland's extra point is good. Chris Hetland makes it seven to nothing. One of our inside the game topics tonight. The Gators looking for more big plays. Well, here's one, 58 yards. Percy Harvin takes it all the way for the Gators. Well, the sellout crowd at the Swamp uh, still buzzing after the 58-yard connection from Leak to Percy Harbin, Matt, and a lot of things uh, went very well for the Gators on this play. This guy right here has the key block. They show three-man line, and they bring a linebacker. Good job. Chris Leak having the presence of mind. Good adjustment by the freshman, Percy Harbin, and then look at the blocking out front. Jamal Cornelius, a minute ago, everybody was throwing a block for him, and then Andre Caldwell coming in with the cleanup block to spring him into the end zone. Outstanding blocking by these receivers as well as the offensive line. And what a play by Harbin, a freshman who last week did a little bit of everything for the Gators and clearly is going to be a playmaker around here. Last week, a reverse, a shovel pass, an end around, and he scores his first touchdown in the first quarter here tonight against UCF. The kick by Jonathan Phillips down in the end zone. Let's get an update from Steve Babbick. Steve. One of the many traditions Urban Meyer instituted for player development and uh, team building was freshmen come in and they wear a black stripe on their helmet the first week of practice or until they have to lose the stripe. Basically, you've got to do something spectacular to have this black stripe come off. Well, you have a big brother. Jamel Cornelius was the big brother for Percy Harvin. After day one, Jamel Cornelius called Urban Meyer, Percy Harvin black stripe is gone. So they took off the black stripe and Percy Harvin, now a full-time member of the Gators. It's a great team uh, building concept and the, the neat thing about it is the big brother goes to the coach and says coach he's pretty good he loses the strike and is uh, an interesting tradition and one uh, that the players seem to really enjoy I'm not sure how the, the freshmen enjoy it the pressure <laughs> to get that stripe removed off their helmet in practice in preseason but uh, it seems like a, a good team building effort by the coaching staff Nat. great team building effort but even more so for for a young guy a freshman receiver that's come in or a freshman that's coming in from another program prior to the snap offsides on a defense play a move as a result players jump will remain fair. well uh, going back to talking about the uh, the stripe removal it gives that young guy that's been all world somewhere else a chance to earn his stripes when he comes here, more so than coming in with all the praise and think it's an automatic. So I think it's a, a great a great move by the coaching staff for these young guys. By the penalty against the Gators, the ball carrier is the fullback, Jason Peters, the senior out of Seattle, Washington. He picked up one yard. It'll be second and four at the 26. So the Golden Knights picked up three first downs on their first possession. They moved the ball with several clutch third down conversions. In fact, they were two for three on third down conversions on their first possession. 
They're looking at a second and four from their 26. The Gators have them stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And the give is to Smith. Well, the Gators have so many blue shirts around there. Rather, it's Peters uh, getting the call once again, Jason Peters. Yeah, the Gators are walking six, seven, sometimes as many as eight, nine men up around the line of scrimmage, uh, daring them to throw the football. George O'Leary plays a ball control type of offense. They, they will pound the ball at you. They'll try to find something that might be a weakness in your defense, and they'll take advantage of it for as long as it works. Right now, they're running it between the tackles on this possession. Moffitt rolling right, throwing quickly, and the ball is caught by Mike Walker. Ryan Smith takes him out of bounds, but the Golden Knights pick up a first and ten. Walker, a young man that is coming off knee surgery and still kind of feeling his way back. A very explosive receiver, but I'm not sure if he's ready to, to be all that explosive this early in the season. Still kind of testing that knee out. Well, and, and, and the key is they run a very safe play as you get Moffitt outside the pocket and Walker, the young man that went in motion, just turns up, knows that he only needs a yard and a half for a first down, gets the first down. Well, they're three out of four on third down conversions. Joe Cohen came busting up the middle and dropped quarterback Stephen Moffitt for a loss of two. So many times we talk about the ability of a would-be tackler to get off the block and make the tackle. That time, Joe Coyne had great vision on the quarterback, and as he started to try and run the scramble play right up the middle, quarterback draw, he's able to get off his block, make the tackle with his left arm. Just outstanding reading and, and reaction. How many Joe times have you seen a guy go from running back to defensive tackle <laughs> in college football? Joe Cohen has made that adjustment for the Gators. And asked to be moved. Yeah. Moffitt showing that strong arm should have been caught. It's an incompletion. Ball intended for Joaquim. And there is another flag down. This one is going to go against the Golden Knights. But another well-thrown ball by Stephen Moffitt. Well, he's, he's hitting his receivers right on the money. That time, the receiver tried to catch the ball in his chest instead of catching it in his hands. Holding number 85 of the offense. Penalty be declined. Third down. George O'Leary, great success as the head coach at Georgia Tech. The ball club in 98, went 10 and 2, and uh, was a co-champion of Atlantic Coast Conference. Last year's Conference USA Coach of the Year. Golden Knights went 7 and 1 in conference play, won the East Division. They're the preseason pick to do it again. Moffitt's throw under pressure this time is incomplete. That time he had to hurry it and threw off his back foot. The Gators were getting good pressure from Ray McDonald. Well, this time the Gators bring pressure from out here. You'll see Ryan Smith coming on the blitz, unblocked. Good job of getting his hands up, forcing the errant throw as he overshoots his intended receiver, Willie Thornton. Second punt of the game for Allen Horn. Reggie Nelson back to return. Much better punt by Horn after the 28-yarder. And Nelson, did he call for a fair catch? I guess not. And he is uh, fortunate to hold on to that football. Beautiful punt, 51 yards without a return. And the Gators will have the ball inside the 20 at about the 19-yard line, leading the UCF Golden Knights 7-0 in the first quarter. It's back. The Chevy model year-end event. We're moving out the last of the 06 Chevy models. So make your move. They're going fast. More Americans choose Chevy. Claim yours before they're gone. See your Southern Chevy dealers. It is absolutely possible to find a woman <laughs> who is a sports fan on eHarmony. And she is. She is a sports fan. I'm in my Browns, and he's in his Steelers, two biggest rivals in the NFL. And, uh, well, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned. As as I'm concerned. <laughs> Sense of humor is just one of the 29 dimensions we use to match you on eHarmony.com. My dad said, you're going to marry a Steelers fan? His little girl was moving to enemy territory. And I got phone calls from her family at the beginning of the game. <laughs> oh, she was starting up big time when the Browns looked like they had some life. Looked like they were going to really give them a run for their money. And or at least score a point or yeah. something. 
Find that one person that is going to appreciate you and love you passionately for who you really are, regardless of what team you root for. It's fun to have a little banter back and forth, and hopefully one of these days it will be a true rivalry again. Yes. Find everything you're looking for on eHarmony.com. Log on today. It's television's most prestigious fishing tournament. FLW Outdoors. Look at the bend in that rod. The ultimate weekly challenge in competitive fishing. Woo! Huge fish. Follow the world's top anglers as they go head to head in a race to hook the day's most elusive catch. Woo! And battle it out for the right to be crowned world champion. FLW Outdoors, Sundays on FSN. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I've I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan, big, big fan. Thank you. And listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm gonna have to block you. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. College football on Sun Sports is brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealers. Visit your Toyota dealer now and check out the all-new 2007 FJ Cruiser. 51-yard punt by Alan Horn and uh, Reggie Nelson almost got himself into a little bit of trouble trying to return it as the Gators have taken the 7 to nothing lead. Let's get another look, Nat. Yeah, Reggie Nelson has got a fair catch this ball. Janelle Neal is right here, right right in the way as he's catching the ball. Almost kept him from even being able to catch the football. Deshaun Wynn running it on first down and picks up uh, seven yards out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Boy, it's uh, good to see Deshaun Wynn back and healthy this week. He banged up his shoulder, his neck and shoulder last week and didn't play in the second half after getting 45 yards on the ground in the first half against Southern Mississippi. Wynn running very strong early tonight. Yeah, he was running exceptionally well last week. He was averaging over six yards per carry before he banged his shoulder. Harvin in motion. Leak fakes the handoff to Percy Harvin. And the pass intended for fullback Billy Lasko is incomplete. Lasko, a guy that's been banged up and uh, was not at 100% last week against Southern Mississippi. But uh, Big Billy has had a good week of practice. And the fifth-year senior from Gainesville, one of 13 fifth-year seniors on this Florida team. He, he's one of the more valuable guys that just do whatever the team asks. We talked about Joe Cohen earlier, moving from fullback to, to defensive uh, tackle. You know, Billy Lasko is the same way. Wherever you need me, coach, I'm ready to line up and get it done. They're down in a no-back set for Chris Leak. Leak on the option, the inside pitch to Harbin. Look at that cutback move by Percy Harbin. Then the ball pops out, but was he down? I think they're going to rule that Harbin was on the ground. We have not seen a signal indicating at UCF football, at least not from the officials. And they'll say his D was on the ground at the 46. Oh, well, they're signaling UCF football. And they have given it to him now. Well, this will be an outstanding opportunity to go back and take a look. You know, Percy Harvest makes a good cut and look like the ball comes out from that angle as he hits the ground. But you, know, you couldn't really see. Let's see. Here's another look at it. Outstanding block by Jim Tark right there as he just pancakes a UC. Uh, I don't know. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's got to be either reviewed. way, you know, but they will review it. Here's another look at it. Great block there by Jim Tark. Ball comes out. It's just a question whether his knee was on the ground. Ball comes out before his uh, upper body hits the ground, David. Yeah, but was his knee on the was ground? And we don't have whether his knee was down. We don't have the best angle, at least from what we've seen. Here's another look. It's. I don't it's, think it's. It's, uh, it's going to be hard to overturn that. It's, it's not indisputable evidence to overturn the call, at least based on what we've seen. His knee might have been down, but we haven't seen it yet. Uh, that uh, would indicate that his knee was on the ground when the ball came out. Well, I'll tell Let's you. Let's see this angle. Nope, I think it's a fumble. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty close to being out before the knee hits the ground. So let's see what the uh, replay booth comes up with. Instant replay rules. 
Each play automatically reviewed. A coach may challenge one play per game if he has a timeout. And if uh, your challenge is upheld, you get the timeout back. If not, then you lose the timeout. And but the, uh, this, this one is not being challenged by Urban Meyer, as I understand it. This is one well, for that's the, the key. That's the key. And it looked like Harvin did fumble the ball before his knee went down. After review of the previous play, video evidence shows that the play stands as called on the field. First down. Well, David, even, even though Percy Harvin fumbled the football, you still like getting the ball in his hands. He is so exciting once he has the football. He's just got to understand that people are going to be coming from behind trying to rip that thing out and put it away. On the turnover, and the Gators won the turnover battle last week, 3-1 to one against Southern Mississippi. But the Golden Knights with good field position, and Kevin Smith, you can see why he is touted as a big-time running back out of South Florida, Miami Southridge High School. Kevin Smith with terrific yardage on first down. And this time, as they try and get to the left side, Gators are in great position. Get the crackback block, everybody's there. But a nice job by Smith of just cutting it back. A very patient runner, David. Yep. Give the linemen a chance to get their blocks. And it's a good offensive line. A veteran, the most experienced line, returning to college football this year. This time, Smith is hit up just beyond the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be close to a first down. While they sort things out, let's take a look at tonight's Geico quote of the game presented by Geico where 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Ryan Smith, the transfer from Utah. I always wanted to play big time college football. It was like a dream. I almost got teary eyed on the Gator walk. That's Ryan. Formation, only six men on the line. Offense. That's Ryan talking about his experience last week against Southern Mississippi. A young man that started his collegiate career at Utah with Urban Meyer and that coaching staff out uh, in Utah. And uh, last year fell into a little disfavor with the Utah coaching staff, lost his starting job. And because he had graduated from college, he was able to transfer and immediately be eligible to play for another Division I team, the University of Florida, and a familiar coaching staff with Chuck Heater in the secondary and Urban Meyer as the head coach. Penalty against UCF, and the throw by Moffitt is incomplete. Intended for Rocky Ross, who has one catch already today. And the Gators get good pressure on Moffitt again, Matt. Well, they bring the corner blitz, but once again, outstanding blocking. Nice job by Kevin Smith. Just an errant throw. This is a, a offensive line that really knows their, their jobs, and they do a nice job of just passing guys along, staying at home so they don't get fooled as the blitz and the pressure comes. Moffitt has shown that if he is given time to stand back there, he's going to throw good balls. Pressure again, McDonald. Moffitt will keep it. Tony Joyner upends him at the 42-yard line. Joyner, the player of the game on the defensive side of the ball last week for the Gators. How improved is this junior, Nat, from Haines City, Florida? He is a much different-looking player than from a year ago. It's called maturity and experience. And Moffitt does everything he can to buy time, and then he decides to break the pocket. We said he was a scrambler. Nice move, tried to cut it back inside. But Charl I mean, uh, Tony Joyner having the ability and, and the wherewithal to reach back and, and snatch him out of the air with that right arm. I almost said Charlie Jonah, the all-pro receiver. <laughs> Alan Horn's third punt. And the fair catch is made by Reggie Nelson at the 14-yard line. So this time, Nelson does make the fair catch after a 30-yard punt by Horn. And the Gators take the ball. So the turnover does not cost them uh, points, but certainly field position. Gator football celebrating 100 years this fall. Share in the excitement and vote for the Gators, the Gator fans, Gatorade All-Century Team at the Gatorade display and participating Publix super, supermarket stores. 100 years of Gator football kicked off last week here at the Swamp against Southern Mississippi. This week, another opponent from Conference USA and an in-state uh, rival, the University of Central Florida Golden Knights. Here is Harbin again. They've gone back to that well, and Harbin is off to the races. Brought down from behind at the 33-yard line of UCF. There is a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage.
Well, we, we talked about big plays. Percy Harvin has given us big play after big play, but look like this one is going to get called back. Outstanding run once again by Percy Harvin. 55 yards, but it's coming back. Illegal chop block against number 79 and 63 of the offense. Half the distance to the five. Replay first down. All right, the illegal chop block is the call, and the Gators are going to have this, this one called back, but Harvin making a big play earlier in the first period, a 58-yard touchdown catch and run, and that's the only score on the board to this point. And, David, that, that was a team-coordinated effort. Percy Harvin will get the credit, but everybody got their block. Everybody did their job to create that big play. The Gators had... Uh, Six plays over 20 yards last week against Southern Mississippi, but no real big play. So already a 58-yard pass connection tonight. And it looks like uh, the Gators have the chance to make a lot of more big ones here against UCF. But the penalty brings the ball back to Sean Wynn, pounding it up between the tackles and carries it out to the 15-yard line. And, and the tackle made by Hogue. As Hogue makes the tackle on win, you know, talking about big plays, this is a ultra-conservative defense that basically want to make you go the distance, you know, short plays all the time, not giving up the big play, and already the Gators have hit them with several big plays, a couple of them been called back, but there is a potential there when you've got playmakers like Percy Harvin, like Andre Caldwell, like Jamal Cornelius, and we haven't even called Dallas Baker's name all day. Andre Caldwell, another guy that can make big plays. The Gators have a lot of them. But so far, just one score on the board after one quarter from the Swamp in Gainesville. George O'Leary's UCF Golden Knights against the Florida Gators. 100 seasons of Florida football. Second quarter from Gainesville when we come back. Hey, Gator fans, watch the best plays, the last second decisions, and then make your call. Watch Sun Sports after every Florida Gator game for the best postgame coverage. Geico Gator postgame. In 1906 against the Gainesville Athletic Club. I don't think they're playing football anymore. But the University of Florida certainly is, and they lead the Golden Knights 7-0 after one period of play. Sellout crowd number 104 in a row here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. And the Gators getting uh, the big play out of Percy Harvin on the pass from Chris Leak, the only score of the football game. The Gators turn the ball over near midfield, and uh, otherwise uh, they, they possibly would have had another score and then had a long play called back because of a penalty. Well, the Gators have shown that they can move the football against this defense. Uh, you know, they just got to get out of their own way. They've got a couple penalties. They've called big plays back, as you stated, David. Second down. As the Gators start the second quarter from their 15-yard line. Quick toss to Caldwell. Andre Caldwell at the 20. And is hit and knocked down a short of the first down by Joe Burnett. The freshman All-American from a year ago out of Eustis, Florida. You mentioned it, uh, Natty had five interceptions last year. Also a terrific tackler. He had 15 tackles from a cornerback position. That's a lot of tackles for a cornerback. He's got great talent. Yeah, he's a Jim Thorpe Award nominee in the preseason All-USA uh, Conference uh, first team. So, you know, young man has a lot of talent. Third down and four. Leak rolling out of the shotgun. Finally finding a receiver as he had plenty of time, and they're going to call it a catch and a first down for the Gators. David, one of the things the Gators wanted to do was, against this football team, move Chris Leak out of the pocket, roll him one way or another. This time they roll him to his right, his strong side. He's got pressure coming from the backside, but because of the roll, he's able to get, get outside and then find an open receiver. Did a nice job of scanning the field down, downfield and then coming off to his outlet for the first down. First catch of the night for Cornelius Ingram. Chris Leak now third all-time in passes attempted. He has just passed John Reeves for number three on the all-time list. Leak looking long, now throwing over the middle. Caldwell can't hold on. Sort of got his feet turned around on him, and that one slips in and out of his hands. The junior from Tampa broke the leg against Tennessee last year, missed the rest of the season. Here's another look at it as Chris Leak's, you know, double pumps, and this ball's slightly behind 
Caldwell. Nice job of trying to turn and, and while suspended in there, make the catch. You know, this is one that uh, Caldwell will tell you he would catch nine out of ten times. That time he just was not able to come down with it. And uh, no defender anywhere near him. And a missed opportunity for the Gators. That's the only pass that Leak has not completed. Offensive line doing a nice job of protecting Leak. And another drop ball. This time it's Harmon. Well, Chris Leak uh, has had two drops in a row. And look at the, the senior come up to the freshman and say, look, don't worry about it, young fellow. We're going to come back to you. And, and that's what it's all about. Another nice job of Chris getting outside the pocket. I'll tell you what happened to the young fellow right then. That time, Harmon tried to catch the ball in his body, let the ball got to him, and it slid right through. Got to catch those kind of balls in your hands. You got to reach back and pluck it out of the sky just like it's an apple. Now a one-back set, Keystone Moore. And it's Leak rolling to his left this time. All kinds of uh, throwing room, and this pass is incomplete. So the Gators go 0 for 3 as Kenneth Tooks, unable to bring it in cleanly. He continues to have a conversation with the official. Let's go back and take a look. This time you move Chris to his left. He has to turn around, reset his feet. And there, he sort of short on this ball. Hmm. Can't tell from that angle, but a nice effort by Kenneth Cooks. Well, that looked like a good catch. Trying to get both arms underneath the football, but uh, side judge said no way. Urban Meyer out on the field uh, arguing for Tooks. But no challenge, and Florida will punt the ball away. Well, David, Florida will punt the ball away, but that time they stopped themselves. You had uh, two drop balls. Yep. And then uh, an underthrow by Chris Leak, probably the worst pass he threw all afternoon. Eric Wilbur's first punt. There's Joe Burnett standing deep for UCF. And the senior from Winter Park, Florida. Low line drive, and it is fair caught. Burnett at the 35-yard line. The Golden Knights take possession of the football after a 37-yard punt by Eric Wilbur. Florida leads the Golden Knights 7 to nothing. Enter to win the SunTrust Big Game Tailgate and tickets for 20 sweepstakes. You could get 20 tickets to the Florida-Florida State game, including passes to our VIP tailgate party. Visit any SunTrust branch in Florida before October 31st to register. You see a football early in the second quarter. Smith the ball carrier. And knocked down by his own man, but that was the play of Earl Everett that shoved the offensive lineman back into Kevin Smith. Uh, and that's what you've got to do. you got those big horses out front. Uh, nice job of just getting upfield, creating a pile, not allowing Smith to cut back. There's no seam there as Patrick Brown gets knocked right back into the ball carrier. Outstanding effort. And then Earl Everett coming in, cleaning up. You know, we talked about getting some tackles for losses, getting some tackles for no gains. Gators are starting to get that done. Still don't have a sack, though. Now the Gators need to force uh, some turnovers here. UCF has forced the only turnover so far tonight. Florida, a ball-hawking football team. Mike Walker makes the catch at the 41-yard line, a five-yard play for UCF. Both of these teams, Nat, very, very adept at forcing turnovers. UCF ranked number 12 last year in turnover margin. And the Gators uh, even better at number three, plus 18 for the year last season. Urban Meyer's clubs are known for their takeaway ability. Utah, very much the same story, and at Bowling Green. Go down. Moffitt goes down. Marcus Thomas, he is an incredible athlete, a guy that can do a standing back flip at his size, and he didn't need to do anything but just charge the quarterback and put Moffitt on the ground. Well, you'll watch. Marcus Thomas just splits the guard in the center, comes in, and... Just politely puts him to the ground. You got a double team block. The guard, big number 79, Kyle Smith, start to turn out. And Gagnon Moffat is thinking he's getting, Marcus, excuse me, is thinking he's going to get some help. He doesn't get it. Marcus Thomas makes the play. Great pressure on Horn uh, as you look at Thomas. An incredible athlete, a guy that can dunk a, a basketball. It's 6'3", almost 300 pounds. That's a 45-yard punt by Horn under 
great duress. Florida will have the football. Leading 7 to nothing at the swamp. Friday at 7 on Sun Sports, Rec Warehouse College kickoff breaks down the Gators' visit to take on the Vols. Also find out how you can win the ultimate game room. Rec Warehouse College kickoff Friday night at 7, only on Sun Sports. If you missed last week's show, you missed a terrific feature on Ray McDonald. Gators senior defensive uh, lineman and uh, also the Atkins brothers at Florida State and Miami. Very interesting stuff. Good stuff on Rec Warehouse College football. Leak's pass is almost picked off. And it might have been. No, they're going to rule it incomplete. Oh, a near leak interception that time as Kyle Fowler almost uh, made the play for UCF. Well, Chris gets pressure right up the center, and he's trying to throw around the blitzer. This ball is just overthrown. He's trying to get the ball to Dallas Baker, but nice job by Dallas of going in there, stripping the ball out. The ball actually hits the ground. And Kyle Fowler, a redshirt uh, freshman from Longwood out of Lake Brantley High School in the Orlando area, just about had an interception. And I think this time uh, the challenge comes from uh, Coach O'Leary as he steps out and uh, from what we saw David if he did make the challenge he will lose yeah uh, that was obvious that the ball hit the ground that time but to his defense he doesn't have instant replay <laughs> the way we do it bounced around juggled around and then wound up in the hands of a UCF defender now watch watch Dallas Baker he's number 81 that's who he's trying to get the ball to now as the ball is slightly being intercepted see how he pulls it out Ball goes down, hits the ground, and that's why it bounced up in the air like that. Right. Here's another look at it. Ball hits the ground right there. Bounces up. And from the opposite side of the field, O'Leary's side of the field, they were blocked out when the ball hit the ground. On this side of the field, the, the Gator coaching staff and players probably saw that happen. Yeah, he, he obviously could not see it because of the linebacker's body facing them. Here's another look. Now watch this. Watch the ball. You'll see Dallas Baker right here. Now watch that. See the ball hit the ground right there. Yeah, there's no question about it. Yeah, ball hits the ground. I tell you, trying to draw around that ball and as it's moving is kind of tough, David. But let's get another look at you it. You don't play many video games. No, do no, you? no. Right there, you'll see the ball on the ground. There it is. Freeze yeah. it. Ball's on the ground. Now watch as he turns it loose. Ball pops back up because he hits it with his knee, as well as the momentum from the ball hitting the ground. So therefore. It's not an interception. And the officials are looking at the same uh, video that we just looked at. So this uh, play will stand as a, an incomplete pass. Coach George O'Leary. Urban Meyer, the 41-year-old head coach of the Florida Gators. Went undefeated with Utah in 2004. O'Leary had a 10 and 2 team back in 98 with Georgia Tech. And, and David, that errant throw was caused by a uh, free blitzer right on the quarterback, right up the middle. And you know, just a moment ago, we saw the offensive line over there together, where they're talking to him about their pickups. So you you've got to stay at home. You cannot let them come right up the middle because that's the shortest angle to the quarterback. If they come outside, that gives the quarterback a few extra seconds to try and get rid of the football. Here's another look at it. Right here, he never has possession. Ball hits the ground. Well, this was a, a challenge by George O'Leary, so he's going to lose a timeout as well, and you only get one challenge per game. I don't know why it's taking so long. Was, hey, that's my same thoughts, David. Well, well, here we go. He's got equipment trouble. That's probably what it is. There's the replay booth, and if they've got the same pictures we do, and I think that they do. Well, I, I think they get the feed from our truck. Our, yeah. Here's another look, and all you got to do is just watch the football. Here it looks like uh, Corey has the interception, but he's juggling the football, and then as he goes down, there you see the ball right there. It's on the ground, clearly on the ground, never had possession of it, and then it bounces up to uh, Jason Vinson. Who thinks he has the interception?
After review of the play, video evidence shows that the call stands as called on the field. Will be charged to Central Florida. This is their first time out of the first half. And an irate George O'Leary. It's tough to get too upset about these because the video doesn't lie. So he uses his challenge uh, in the second quarter. And uh, the Gators will be second and 10 at the 21 yard line. And we do have timeout on the field with 11.27 to go. So much for all that talk about speeding up the games. This one dragging here in the second period. We'll be back. Nestled in the heart of Florida, there's a place you... Catch Gator Hotline with Urban Meyer on Thursday, September 14th at 7 o'clock, live from Beefo Brady's on Northwest 43rd Street in Gainesville. The show can be heard on the Gator Radio Network and at GatorZone.com. Well, Chris Leak's last four passes have been incomplete. He had uh, several drops, but then a poorly thrown ball, almost picked off by UCF. It is second and 10 from the 21 yard line. Florida leads 7 to nothing. And a fumble on the snap. Leak pouncing back on it at the 19 yard line. Just a mishandled exchange between uh, Leak and Wynn. Let's go back and take a look. Uh, right here, it looked like he never really got it. Yeah. And uh, just uh, good awareness getting on the football. Florida's offense all of a sudden very sloppy. Chris was five for six, and now uh, he's missed the last four and uh, really is uh, struggling at this point in the ballgame. And Urban Meyer really wants to get freshman Tim Tebow in the game, but with a 7 nothing score and his offense sputtering, that is not likely to happen anytime soon. Leak steps up and throws a strike to Dallas Baker. He made one man miss and is tripped up at the 47-yard line by Vincent. Baker, who had nine catches last week, 10 catches in the final game last year in the Outback Bowl. So that's 20 catches now for Baker in the last two plus games. And, and Baker is, is working against number 19, Joe Burnett. But watch the little quick move, puts his hand down, jumps up, and then picks up additional yardage. Outstanding run after the catch. Dallas's first catch tonight goes for 28 yards. And he made a pretty good uh, coverage guy miss him out there on the corner. Play action fast, a fake, and the throw by Leak is caught. What a beautiful catch by Cornelius. Jamel Cornelius twisting his body back toward the sideline and holds it in. Well, one of the things the Gators wanted to do was get the ball into Jamal Cornelius' hands. Low play action. Nice little ball, ball's outside, throwing it away from the safety. Nice job of re re reversing his body. Now watch him turn inside, and he's gonna turn all the way around and make the catch. Great concentration by Cornelius to come down with this grab. Well, that is a big uh, first down play for the Gators. Now to the UCF 31 yard line. Jared Faison, the freshman is Wide out to the right side. If the ball goes uh, inside to Deshaun Wynn, Gators uh, committed to running the football, as we talked about in that one of our key storylines tonight inside the game. But uh, they have really gone to, to putting it in the air here in the second quarter. Well, they're finding big holes in, in this uh, zone defense. And, you know, Chris has just been off target. He had a couple drop balls when you look at his numbers. So, you know, there's no reason not to throw the football if you've got receivers that wide open and they're making plays. 28 yards on the ground for the Gators, 22 for the Golden Knights. And here's Harbin on the handoff, the end around. Percy Harbin stepping out of bounds at the 25 yard line. And you know, you're still looking, Nat, for somebody to emerge running the football for the Gators. Deshaun Wynn, I think by now we pretty much know what kind of back Deshaun Wynn is. He's a guy that is solid, but uh, not going to be a big play ball carrier. So the Gators are looking for somebody, and uh, perhaps Harvin is that guy that you can hand the ball off to like we just saw on an end around and get him in a position to get you some running yards. Well, David, when I look at this offense, I almost think that your slot guys are the playmakers more so than your running back. Yeah. The running backs are more the pounders that's just going to get the tough yardage for you. 
No back set. Three men wide to the left. Leak fakes the pass and runs it. That looked like a cold running play for Chris Leak. He stood up, pump fake, and then darted up the middle for six yards and picks up a Florida first down. And, and this time they catch the perfect coverage because he's going to get a blitz coming from out here. And you get good blocking. You see the tackle turns out. Nice job of making the, the uh, linebacker miss him. You think Richards is going to be able to bring him down. Not so as Chris Leak is starting to show he's fleet of feet. This drive started at the 21 yard line. We're inside of nine minutes left in the second quarter. Deshaun Wynn in motion. Again, Leak fumbles the snap. Trying to make something out of it and finds Deshaun Wynn. Wynn has excellent hands, the senior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And he's got a first down, or very close to it. It looks like it will be spotted inside the 10 for a first and 10. Corey Holt made the tackle for UCF. I tell you what, look like Chris is just trying to do too much too fast, and he's not waiting and catching the football. That time he put the ball on the ground, but had the presence of mind to pick it up, knowing he's buying time because it's a roll route where he's getting outside the pocket anyway, and then coming to his uh, outlet receiver, Deshaun Wynn, for the reception. Leak has already thrown for 172 yards today. Lasko in the game. And the handoff to win, running off right tackle into the end zone, touchdown. Eight yards for Deshaun Wynn, and the Gators take a two-touchdown lead midway in the second quarter. And, David, that's just good blocking by that right side of the offensive line with Tate Casey at the tight end, Carlton Metter at the right tackle, Drew Miller at the right guard, and Steve Rissler, and then just a nice job of tucking in behind those blockers giving everything a chance to develop and then slipping into the end zone. And a fumbled uh, snap. This happened last week, and Wilbur throws it up for grabs, and it falls to the turf. Well, that's a dangerous play to make. UCF picks that off. They're off and running the other end. Well, the Gators, uh, as Steve Babick pointed out before the game, one of their points of emphasis from Urban Meyer to tighten up special teams and tighten things up all the way around and it's gotten very sloppy here in the second quarter the head coach cannot be happy about uh, some of the things that he's watching and this this is another is look another at the look. touchdown and you see a good lead block by Billy Latsko and uh, Wynn walks into the end zone but an outstanding job of blocking by the right side of the Gator offensive line nice job by Carlton Metter good job by Billy Latsko Tate Casey you name it, those guys uh, did a nice job just getting movement along the line of scrimmage. And this gets Deshaun Wynn into the end zone. Wynn's second touchdown run of the year, the 21st of his career. And, David, this is the second time where Eric Wilbur has just not been able to handle the snap. It's a perfect snap. Everything's done properly. Perfect snap. He just doesn't catch the football. You know, a lot of teams have went to where they use the punter as the holder strictly because the punter and the uh, field goal kicker are together all the time, get a lot of time to work together. But then there's other teams that still use their quarterback or guys that are used to catching the football to do this. I tell you what, Coach Meyer's upset too. He told Butch Raleigh, start to warm up. So on the sideline near the practice kicking net, you have the backup holder, Butch Raleigh, beginning to take some tosses. So Coach Meyer didn't wait long. He didn't like what he saw from Eric Wilbur. He's gonna make a change. Now that would be a surprise to no one. If uh, you saw a change on that in that position, there's Butch Rowley out of uh, Orlando, out of the first academy in Orlando, getting ready to uh, hold the next time the Gators have a, an opportunity. And this is uh, Curtis Francis on the return for the Golden Knights, bringing the ball out to the 29-yard line. And that's where UCF will set things up with eight minutes and four seconds to play. In the first half of football, a nice special teams play by freshman Roderick Blackett at a Papano Beach Ely High School. Well, the Gators gave up just one touchdown last week against Southern Mississippi. That was off of an early turnover. And the Golden Knights have yet to seriously threaten tonight in game two. Moffitt rolling to his right, and his pass is incomplete. Intended for Thornton, who caught a ball early tonight. 
but uh, has still just one reception. He had three catches in their game last week at Thornton against Villanova. But this is not Villanova's defense out here tonight. And the Gators' defense are really doing a nice job of trying to break down that pocket, but the uh, athleticism of Stephen Moffitt is always able to get outside and get rid of the football. And the Gators have yet to force a turnover in this game. Devin Smith, or rather fullback Jason Peters, getting the second uh, down handoff for no gain. And don't miss Gator tailgate overtime, presented by Bell South, featuring a panel of experts, including former wide receiver for the University of Florida, Chris Doring. They'll examine the outcome of this game. That's Monday night at 7, only on Sun Sports. Third and 10 for the Golden Knights. They are three for seven in third down conversions. Marcus Thomas charging across the line, and he was drawn by their tackle, I think, Josh uh, Sitton. And, David, when, when you play against a guy with the speed of a Marcus Thomas, you are got to anticipate. To snap, false start, number 70 of the offense. Five-yard penalty for key third down. If you're the offensive guard, offensive tackle that's playing over him, you've got to anticipate the snap count because he's just too quick for you to get off the ball late and still be able to block him. So, you know, give Marcus Thomas credit for forcing that, uh, that penalty. Derek Harvey in the game at the defensive end. That moves Ray McDonald to tackle. And Moffitt throwing and completing the pass at the 31-yard line and a... Very solid tackle made by Reggie Lewis. Jason Peters on the receiving end. And the Golden Knights come up short on their third down effort and will have to punt the football once again. Good job by the Gators secondary. They set back in a zone defense. Good pressure there by Jarvis Moss, forcing to throw the ball underneath and then coming up, making the tackle short of the first down. Fifth punt for Aaron Horn. Reggie Nelson standing back at the 31-yard line. Oh, line drive spiral. And Nelson again feeling it with a defender in his face. Reggie Nelson holding on to the football. And out of bounds at the 23-yard line. But, well, David, you might question uh, uh, Reggie Nelson's decision-making on catching the football, but you also got to say that the young man has great hands as each and every time he's been able to handle it with a man right in his face. And the Gators with a two-touchdown lead in the second quarter are going to go to freshman quarterback Tim Tebow. Last week he played uh, in two series, scored a touchdown run in his collegiate debut. He ran over a Southern Miss defensive back on a one-yard run in the fourth quarter. So the talented freshman going to get a chance to run this Gator offense in the second quarter tonight with his team leading 13 to nothing. He's got Keystone Moore in the backfield and a single back set. Three men wide to the right, one to the left. Basic four-man front for UCF. T-Bowl going to carry it and runs into the linebacker right up the middle. That's Rex Hill, the defensive tackle that stood in there and knocked him down, a junior out of marathon. Just a little put it in the belly of the running back. A nice job by Rex Hill of just throwing away the guard, just threw him down and stayed at home, made the tackle. Tebow took five snaps at quarterback last week. Strong arm left hander, also an outstanding runner. He'll roll to his right, the lefty. Looking to throw the ball, and he's going to have to tuck it under, and here goes Tebow. Showing uh, some nifty running ability for a big guy. Tebow stands 6'3", almost 230 pounds, and fleet of foot. Finally brought down by Kareem Reed. Well, you get these uh, big off de defensive linemen out there trying to make the tackle. There's Wallace, of course, whoop, and then just great running by Tim Tebow. You know, everybody forgets he threw for 95 touchdowns, but he ran for 63 yeah. during his college career. Rushed for over 3,000 yards in his uh, high school career at Nice High School in St. Augustine. Third down, less than a yard out of the shotgun. Harvin in motion. And again, it's Tebow keeping. 
Tim Tebow made one man miss at the 50, bowls over another defender, and down he goes at the 39-yard line. Power running by the quarterback, Tim Tebow, 29 yards on the play. And, David, I think what we're seeing here as Dan Mullins is making these calls is, you know what, Tim, if we have you just hold on to the football, <laughs> we don't have to worry about you making a mistake. Nice job there. He just sheds a would-be tackler and gets upfield. But great blocking at the point of attack by the center and both guards. I mean, he just makes people miss him. He's a big, big-time quarterback at 6'3", 229 pounds. That's strong. So three plays by Tebow and the Gator offense, and he has carried all three times. And UCF is going to talk things over. Tebow trying to get the crowd charged up. Well, well David, one of the things that uh, we were talking about is somehow or another jazzing up this running game. And I, I must say, with uh, Tim Tebow being in the ball game, keeping the ball three times in succession for 38 yards, you are starting to run the football effectively. And what a difference it's going to make when he is in the ball game that uh, you can't just uh, think he's going to give it to Deshaun Wynn or Keystone Moore because he is a weapon running with the football. A totally different look from uh, senior Chris Leak. Wow, that and, uh, that's a good thing. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half so far. Percy Harvin, boy, this guy is electrifying. 58 yards for the touchdown on the pass from Chris Leak. That was the Gators' first score back in the first period. Defensively, the Gators pitching a shutout so far. The quarterback sacked by Marcus Thomas on Stephen Moffitt. And the second touchdown just moments ago when Deshaun Wynn barrels in from eight yards out. But the Gators uh, mishandling the extra point and have to settle for a 13 to nothing score with 4.50 left in the second quarter. Florida's offense, a completely different looking offense with Tebow running things at quarterback. And, I, and, and I, some of this though, Nat, as you pointed out, is just to, to keep things simple for the young guy and make sure that he doesn't get too excited, too carried away and make a mistake. Rightfully so. Yep. Watch Florida football with Urban Meyer to catch up with all the latest news about the Gator football team. The show airs on Sun Sports Sundays at noon. First and ten. Tebow looking to throw. Firing it on the run, and it is caught by Tooks for a Florida first down. A well-thrown ball by the big left-hander, and Kenneth Tooks with his first catch of the season. Well, David, that's one of the difficulties when you play against a guy like Tim Tebow. You start to put everybody in there and try to create no seams for him to run with. He scrambles out, gets the ball to Tooks. Perfect throw. Hits him right on the numbers. Joe Burnett on the coverage, but a first down for the Gators now at the UCF 28-yard line. The hands off. Keystone Moore. Moore to the 15, the 10. Keystone Moore, the sophomore from Texas, is in for the touchdown. <laughs> 28 yards on the carry, and boy, Tim Tebow just came in there and really rattled that UCF defense with his ability to run the football, and then you open up things for Moore. Well, David, you said it, but you know, no one on the UCF defense felt like Moore had the football. They thought that Tebow was going to pull it out and run with it. He had had such success. You give it in there, there's just nobody there to make the tackle. Another bobbled snap, but Butch Rowley was able to put it down, and Chris Hetland says thank you very much. Gators go up 20 to nothing. A 28-yard touchdown run by Keystone Moore. So the Gators with three touchdowns so far, two of them on the ground. Florida leading 20 to nothing now after the 28-yard run by Keystone Moore. 419 left in the second quarter. Nat, uh, what do you like about uh, the blocking here on this Watch play? Watch these guys right here on this. Tebow is going to put the ball in. To, uh, to Moore's hands, and everybody just feels like he's going to pull the ball out. All the linebackers went with Tim Tebow, so when Moore popped through that first wave of defenders, there was no one there. Another good block downfield by the receiver, and Moore's able to do waltz into the end zone. Five plays, 77 yards, engineered by freshman Tim Tebow. And the Gators up 20 to nothing. Number 
21 deep to return. That's Curtis Francis for the Golden Knights, along with Vincent. And uh, Florida flexing its muscles here in the swamp. They won nine straight here at home. And it is Cur or rather Curtis Francis bringing it out across the 10 and dropped at the 19-yard line, a 14-yard return. Curtis, Let's check in with Steve Babbitt. Well, there's a shot of Mon Williams, one of the candidates to be a back maybe to emerge to help that running game. You know, perhaps, though, Stan Drayton and Urban Meyer are just going to have to do this by committee. We'll see Keaston Moore let the block set, and as Nat Moore said, once that fake worked well with looking at Tebow, there goes Keaston Moore. But the Gators may not have a long-range back. They may have to do it by committee. Well, I think that is what it's shaping up as a win and... Moore both getting the call, and there's a fine play by Tony Joyner. And Kevin Smith is stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Well, David, what happens when you're a football player, you'll watch Tony Joyner right here. You know, he's seen this play before. Watch him just fight through all those would-be blockers and then make the play in the backfield. When you start to see this play time and time again, you start to recognize it on the snap of the ball by the motion of everybody on that offensive line. Outstanding job by Tony Joyner there. And George O'Leary this week said uh, that uh, his team has seen what they're going to see tonight from Florida, defense and offense, but the speed is what's different. And there's the speed from uh, Jarvis Moss getting in the face of Stephen Moffitt and forcing the incompletion. Once again, Matt, it's the speed of the Florida defense that UCF is having problems with tonight. Now, this is Moss right, right out here. Excuse me. It's coming from the, he looked like he was lined up in a linebacker position. They run a in tackle game. That's where the tackle comes out, and then Moss comes in from the end position, comes inside, and he forces the errant throw. Here is Moss right there, 94, coming right up the mill. You got the corner blitz, Lewis on it. Nice job by uh, Stephen Moffitt of just throwing the ball in the dirt right at the feet of the uh, tailback, Smith. Third down and 11. Gators with a four-man rush, and again, it's Moss getting a piece of uh, Moffitt's ankle, and the ball is thrown away. So again, the Gators getting pressure on Stephen Moffitt and have forced the punt. And David, we came into the ball game talking about developing pressure, getting pressure on the young man. The Gators have got tremendous pressure on Moffitt as well as the running backs, but Moffitt has done an outstanding job of getting rid of the football, not giving up the sack, trying to save field position. The well, Gators have not forced any turnovers tonight, Matt, as they are accustomed to doing, but they have put a lot of pressure on Moffitt and that UCF defense. Nelson catches the punt at the 44-yard line and is drilled. So no return after the 36-yard punt. Trevani Johnson made the play for UCF. Immediately following every Florida football game. Don't miss the Geico Gator postgame on Sun Sports. And David, Sun Sports picks up where the network leaves off by giving viewers exclusive extended postgame Gator coverage. Sorry about that, partner, but David, I'm, I'm so excited watching Reggie Nelson time after time. You know, we're talking about finding playmakers. There is a guy trying to make a play. But no one can block the Flyers. I mean, each and every time, you know, all he wants is give him a chance to catch the football and a step, and he can make something happen. So the Gators got to do a better job of blocking the Flyers. Yeah, I think uh, special teams play has been uh, suspect is uh, probably too kind of a word tonight for Florida. And they've been penalized on this play, and the ball is spotted back at the 30-yard line. Chris Leak back at quarterback for the Gators after Tebow directed a 77-yard drive. And here is Deshaun Wynn, the senior, carrying the ball for about 10 yards near the first down marker. And Tim Tebow, this talented freshman, is going to make a lot of plays for many years here at the University of Florida. And that, you can see what the, he brings to the game with his running ability. Well, not only is his speed and quickness, but he's just a tough guy to get down on the ground. Second down and short yardage. Well-thrown ball. Percy Harvin with the catch. And the freshman from Virginia Beach, Virginia, picks up a first down. A 14-yard play. Harvin already with a 58-yard scoring strike from Chris Leak. And that is his second catch. 
Harvin was working against Joe Burnett, which is uh, supposed to be the best cover guy in the USA uh, Conference. Gators in a no huddle offense. Leak rolling out. Going to keep the ball on the option. And steps out of bounds at the UCF 45 yard line. A three yard gain. And it'll be second down. That stops the clock with 204 remaining in the first half. Urban Meyer trying to figure out a way to get more plays run. He is very <laughs> upset, probably as outspoken as any coach in college football regarding these new rules with the clock. And uh, the Gators only ran 59 plays last week. They averaged 70 plays per game a year ago. So he's trying to get as many plays as possible. Coming up at half, we'll take a look at the first half stats and highlights as well. Revisit our keys to the game. Well, not many coaches have been as outspoken about these rule changes as Urban Meyer. There's another drop uh, ball. This time it's Andre Caldwell. Leak has had at least three passes dropped by his receivers tonight. And Chris is 9 for 15. So you throw in the, those three catches, he'd be 12 for 15 and already would be over 200 uh, yards in passing. Well, and, and also think about the plays that have been called back, David, uh, because of the uh, holding penalties or you know, you're talking about a team that really has stopped themselves more so than UCF being able to stop this football team off uh, defensively. Good protection for Leak. And a beautifully thrown football. And here go the Gators. It is Cornelius inside the 10 at the 9-yard line of the Golden Knights. 34-yard. Talk about big plays, man. They're coming left and right. They're coming runs. They're coming passes. What is offense if it uh, could stop shooting itself in the foot? would we'll be having a huge game tonight. And what they do is they spread them out. And that time you saw the zip on the football from Chris Leak. You know, Chris Leak is a passer. Tim Tebow is a runner that also can pass effectively. So what a combination at the quarterback position when you look at Chris Leak and Tim Tebow. No back set. The ball spotted at the 10-yard line. Leak looking for the end zone. He's got Dallas Baker touchdown. When he's looking to go to the end zone, he goes to Baker, the touchdown maker. And Dallas Baker with his uh, first touchdown catch tonight, but his 13th career touchdown catch for the Gators. And David, he had his choice of receivers on that play because both Dallas Baker and Percy Harvin came wide open in the middle of the end zone, and he took the tall guy as he just lobbed it up to Dallas Baker. With Riley holding, Chris Hetland knocks it through. And Florida opens up a 27-point lead against UCF with 129 left in the first half. Well, you get a little crossing route. You've got uh, Dallas Baker, a nice fake. Just a nice fake, head and shoulder fake as he's going to the corner. Then he comes right back underneath, right down the center. Beautiful move there by Dallas Baker. And then you see also Percy Harvin coming in underneath. Had his choice. He says, I'm going to the big fella. He's 6'3". I think if I throw it up, he can get it. Good move. This is a young man now, a fifth-year senior, Dallas Baker, that uh, came into the game with 100 career receptions for the Gators. So that's a pretty elite company, Florida football history, Matt, to grab 100 passes. He's moving toward the top 10 all time. Now 102 in his career, and his second touchdown catch of the year. And that's what we really expected out of Dallas Baker. You know, that particular time, uh, it looked like one of his uh, one of the moves of his uncle Wes Chandler as he put a nice head and shoulder I mean if you are playing defense you think he's going to the corner too and he just popped wide open defender never had a chance well his uncle Wes Chandler was uh, was an explosive receiver I mean a guy that uh, could carry the ball he got a lot of yards after the catch let's put it that way when we, when we look at Percy Harvin that's who he reminds me of, West Chandler, a guy that can catch the ball, that can run with the football. You're talking about a playmaker at his best at the wide receiver position. Flags flying in every way. Francis, a nice return out to the 38-yard line. But let's check out the penalty flag. Ryan Smith made the tackle. UCF might have a uh, very nice return call back. Turn to return. Illegal block in the back. Number 56 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. 
first down. Well, it's going to come back now. Dan, we've also seen a new kickoff man for Florida tonight. Joey Ehas has handled the last couple of kicks. And uh, Urban Meyer looking on. Urban Meyer looking for better special team play. Wants the kickoffs deeper. And, and, and it's kind of interesting because uh, last year, you know, they had some success kicking the ball deep. But, you know, as we talk about defense, we came on the net, on the air talking about this defense creating pressure. Well, the last four times UCF has had the football, they've been three and out. Your first possession, they ran ten plays, and then after that, the defense is just locked down on them. Three-yard gain by Jason Peters, the senior out of Seattle, Washington, getting uh, the call again. Peters with three carries. Kevin Smith, eight carries and 25 yards. And that Florida already with 122 yards in rushing. So we're talking about somebody emerging, but uh, it could be, you know, like Steve Babbitt pointed out a moment ago, that the Gators just uh, get their running yards from uh, from a number of different directions, and, and no one truly steps up as a go-to back. And, David, what's the difference? It's no different than your receiver core. You know, you've got several playmakers out there, and, you know, one one game it might be uh, Percy Harvin. Next game it might be Andre Caldwell, J Jamal Cornelius, Dallas Baker. You, you know, you don't care as long as you get the production. You know, sometimes we make too much of one guy carrying the mail. Hundredth year celebration uh, of Florida football history. That hundred year DVD is now available. And let's take a look at a clip, a uh, little sound bite from former Gator football coach Ray Graves. Yeah, I was really amazed. I still remember yes, yes, but I don't think the fans believed that we'd beaten Georgia Tech. And I don't think Georgia Tech fans believe we'd beaten them either. What a gentleman, Ray Graves, uh, the, the man in charge in the 60s for the Gators. Check out that Gators 100 Years DVD. I finally had a chance to, to look at it this week. It is a really a treasure. All Gator fans uh, should have a copy of that 100 Year DVD special. Moffitt is dropped at the one by Marcus Thomas. Boy, how badly did the Gators miss this guy last week? against Southern Mississippi. He is a one-man wrecking crew out there. And David, if he doesn't go around you, he goes right through you. That time he took his uh, blocker. He's working against the uh, left guard. He just drives him, or excuse me, the right guard. He just drives him right back into the quarterback. Moffitt never saw him until he was in his chest. And also, he's got those fresh legs for having a week off. But uh, just he came out here today with reckless abandon, ready to play, and ready to make a difference and atone for not being here last week to help his teammates out. Uh, he is charged up, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, that, uh, that whole defense is uh, really, really rolling here as uh, the Golden Knights are looking at third down and long and sitting at their own two-yard line. Gators have got two sacks today, and both of them are by Marcus Thomas. Normally, you look for the Gators to get great pressure from outside. The defensive ends come up with the sacks, and. Marcus Thomas and Stephen Harris and Joe Coyne usually just break down the pocket, force the quarterback not, not to step up so they could get the sacks. But today, he's getting it done on his own. There's a good look at Charlie, Charlie Strong, defensive coordinator, the Colt defensive coordinator. Well, Matt, uh, Brandon Seiler and Earl Everett normally are the top tacklers for the Gator defense, but we have uh, hardly pulled their names because the, the front guys are doing such a good job. And, and that's what you want. Some defenses, you say you want your defensive line to keep the linebackers free, keep them clean. And then other times when you got guys like Marcus Thomas, Stephen Harris, and Joe Cohen, you know, you want them to get in there and make plays. Devin Smith is stuffed. And the ball comes out. Let's see if it's a fumble. Well, it's going to be down at the three. Jason Peters, the ball carry, and he ran into Earl Everett head-on collision. Well, Earl Everett heard you say that we hadn't called his name. <laughs> Not so, too much. Uh, yeah, he's had a couple great plays. That yeah, time yeah. he's right in the hole. Peters had nowhere to go with the football. Ball does come out there. I guess they said his forward progress was stopped. Quick whistle. Yeah, it was. Gators should get good field position here, David, with another chance to put some points on the board. This is their third and final timeout. And the timeout is taken by the Gators, their third and final timeout. And uh, George O'Leary's worst nightmare 
is coming uh, to fruition in this first half. His team fallen behind 27 to nothing. Peters uh, just looking for any kind of a crack in that Florida defensive line, and there is nothing there. And as you can see, the ball pops out, and uh, I'm not sure who recovered it, but uh, they ruled that, uh, like you said, David, probably the fact that his progress had stopped, and they were driving him backwards before the ball comes out. Here's another look where you see a nice job by Jarvis Moss of getting his hands in there, knocking the ball out, but all for naught. Just a great work by that defensive line and, and cohesiveness between the defensive line and the linebackers. Everybody getting in their gaps, and then Earl Everett getting in his, making the big stop on Peters. And David, the reason the Gators were forced to call the timeout is with the efforts of speeding up the game, once this, the official signal the ball ready for play, clock would have started, and they'd have ran 25 seconds off the clock. So good heads-up call by the Gator staff of uh, taking the timeout at the same time on the clock. And the Gator offense is ready to charge onto the field because the clock will start on the ball ready signal from the officials after this punt return by Reggie Nelson, which is going to be to the 35-yard line. So the Gator offense is ready to sprint onto the field, and uh, they've got their play ready to go with 38 seconds left in the first half. Now they've got to be ready to snap the ball as soon as the uh, referee signals the ball ready for play. Well, the clock hasn't started yet. Total yards, 363 for the Gators. And only 71 for the Golden Knights. Good job by the Gator offense to be ready to go. The pass threaded in there between two defenders by Leak to Dallas Baker. And Baker did not get out of bounds, so the clock continues to roll with 18 seconds left in the half. David, I, I, I don't understand that call that he did not get out of bounds because, uh, you know, he actually got tackled out of bounds. Huh. Now we're down to 12 seconds left. And uh, it looks like they might be checking uh, to see whether or not it's a first down. That's why the clock has stopped. It took them a long time to, to figure out that they needed to stop the clock, too. Well, I, I think what happens is because they ruled that he didn't get out of bounds, he got out of bounds, but they say he was going backwards to get out of bounds, so they ruled him out, so they got to take his forward progress, and uh, look like it is a first down. But the Gators lost about 15 seconds while the officials let the clock run, and they stood around watching the football before they decided to measure for the first down. Well, this play needs to go into the end zone so that uh, if it's incomplete, you got a chance to run your... Place kicker on. Leap over the middle. It is caught for the touchdown. Andre Caldwell. You love it when a receiver goes up, knows he's going to take a shot. That time, Andre Caldwell makes the catch for the touchdown. How good is it to have Andre Caldwell back on the field? Ooh. You know, he took a big shot there. And uh, teammates having to carry him off the field. Here's the guy that suffered the broken leg last year on an ugly kick return against Tennessee to start the second half. And he is still very shaky. Wouldn't Just you know it? With the extra point. Hey, we, we were able to catch the uh, snap from center this time. No bobbing the ball, everything clean, but uh, let's hope that Andre Caldwell is okay. This is ball is thrown on a frozen rope and uh, outstanding catch by Caldwell as he goes up. Watch him go up and catch the ball in his hands, exposes his body, and then he gets hit. But watch the shot coming off the top, which hits him in the headgear. And uh, that's probably why he's a little woozy. I've been there before, David. Mm. Almost got knocked out, uh, it looked like. Sharef Rashad. S strong safety coming from uh, the left side. Here's another look. Chris Leak does a nice job of looking the safety off and then coming back to Caldwell, where he wanted to go with the football all the time. Now, this guy's just a, a, a pure passer, and when given time to throw the football, he's going to get it in the vicinity, give his uh, receivers a chance to make a play. And I think it was Vincent that came over and caught him with the helmet, number 45. It was Rashad that made the first hit, yeah. and then Vincent came in and looked like he actually hit him uh, with his thigh up around the headgear. 
Nothing intentional. So that touchdown with four seconds on the clock. And Florida with a 34-point lead, 34 to nothing. Ehas with the kickoff, little squibber, and it is down at the 41-yard line. Well, the Golden Knights, if they can hurry their offense on the field, they might get one play before the end of the half. Urban Meyer's football team uh, sloppy at times, but it's hard to argue with almost 400 yards of offense in one half and 34 points, Nat. And, and David, doesn't even look like the UCF team is uh, looking to come out because they know as soon as they wind the clock, uh, you know, they wouldn't get the playoff. Now the official now signals the ball ready for play, and UCF going to lick their wounds and regroup in the locker room while the Gators charge in there with a 34-point lead. 34 to nothing, our score. Let's go to the field. Uh, we tried to catch up with George O'Leary as he was running off the sidelines. We asked him to stop by and talk to us. He's obviously frustrated with the 27-point second quarter. Uh, he kept running, did not want to talk about his team's performance in the first half. David? Well, can't say that I blame him. What was it your mom said? If, you, if there's nothing uh, nice to say, then just don't say anything. Well, I guess George O'Leary going with that philosophy here at the end of the first half with the Gators leading the Golden Knights 34 to nothing. Total domination by the seventh ranked team in the country as Chris Leak uh, throwing the ball extremely well tonight. Tim Tebow getting involved and the Gators running and passing almost 400 yards of total offense in one half of football. College football on Sun Sports is brought to you in part by SunTrust. Enter to win the big game tailgate and tickets for 20 at any SunTrust branch. And by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. Florida Gators led uh, just seven to nothing at the end of the first quarter, but exploding in the second period for 27 points in that quarter. They lead UCF 34 to nothing at the intermission. Welcome back uh, on uh, Tonight's game from Gainesville, Nat Moore, David Steele, Steve Babick on the sideline. Nat, the Gators scored three touchdowns in the span of four minutes and 19 seconds at the end of that uh, second quarter. Phenomenal offensive production in the first half by Florida. A great offensive production, but also great defense because they, at the end of the game, at the end of the first quarter on, everything's been three and out, and that gives the offense the ball in great field position and more opportunities to put points on the board. All right, let's take a look at some highlights from the first half of the game for the Gators. Certainly, there are plenty of them now. And they got started off with the right way, getting the ball into the freshman Percy Harvin's hands. And this is just a 58-yard run and catch by Percy Harvin's. And then an outstanding open field tackle by Tony Joyner on Stephen Moffitt as stopping him short of the first down. And then what? how good is it to have this guy? Marcus Thomas back, splits the tackle guard, gets the sack. And then Deshaun Wynn following the lead block of Billy Latsko getting into the end zone to put the Gators up early in the ball game, seven to zip. And then Tim Tebow getting some action early in the ball game, goes off for 29 yards, showing strength and elusiveness. And then when Tebow has the ball, everybody thinks he's going to keep it. He gives it to Keystone Moore. He goes 29 yards, or 25 yards, excuse me, for the touchdown. And then uh, easy pass. This is just too easy for Chris Leak as he gets Dallas Baker in the back of the end zone. And then Andre Caldwell catches one where he takes a big shot from Rashad as well as Jason Vinson, but he holds on for the reception. And then as we look at our keys to the game, balance attack, 17 yards rushing, 54 yards passing, not very balanced, and they're struggling. No turnovers for UCF. Running game has improved for the Gators as they had 122 yards in the first half. Need sacks. They got sacks today. They got two sacks and six tackles for loss. Big plays continuously by Marcus Thomas in that offensive line along with Jarvis, Mar Jarvis Moss. Well, those keys to the game brought to you by Chevrolet, America's number one brand, number one value. Zero turnovers and still 34 points for the Gators. Let's go to the sideline and Steve. Coach Meyer, I know in that first half, you really like what you saw in that second quarter. Yeah, I like the, uh, they, they bounced back. I thought we had, uh, I really liked the first quarter, except for we had some young guys make some mistakes. We had probably 70 yards of offense taken away because of silly penalties and we had a turnover. I think our defense, we gave up a couple uh, third down conversions. Other than that, they pretty much stopped them. That looked like the offense you see in practice during the week. 
Yeah, they're uh, Chris Sleek and Tim Tebow. That's a nice little combination, and, and we have talented receivers. It's like Bubba Caldwell is extremely rusty, and it was great to see him make that catch. And then uh, Percy Harvin, and, and we're going to see Jared Faison a little bit in the second half, and Riley Cooper. Marcus Thomas makes a difference in there up front. Yeah, he's a great player. He's got to. Uh, he's a he's a big part of this team. He's got to make sure we take care of him. He's got to take care of the Gators. Coach, young guys in the second half. We'll get to see some new guys come in. Yeah, we're uh, we want to we want to play. We have a SEC schedule coming up here pretty soon. We want to play, so we're going to keep going as hard as we can and uh, try to play a lot of football here second half. Thank you, Coach. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thank you, Steve and uh, Urban Meyer. Very calm and uh, collected. That uh, that's easy to do when your team's up 34 to nothing. A lot of things to like about what the Gators have done in the first half, and except for that little stretch in the first quarter, Nat, when the Gators got a little shaky and dropped some passes, had some penalties, fumbled the ball once. Just a tremendous first half of football. On the kick return, this is Brandon James, the very speedy freshman out of St. Augustine, and he brings the ball out to the 33-yard line. Mentioning the stats, though, Nat, the Gators with uh, almost 400 yards in offense in the first half of the game. 398 total, 276 in the air, 122 on the ground. And think about the, the long runs that were called back, uh, you know, with the penalties. So, you know, Gators offensively are clicking on all cylinders. But defensively, David, in the first two series, the UCF uh, offense had 16 plays. In the last six series, they had 15 plays. Hmm. So, yeah, they've tuned it up on defense. Marcus Thomas has come back and uh, got everybody getting in there, getting it done. Jared Faison will take the handoff on the end around out of that slot position. And the freshman carries it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So Faison getting his first collegiate handoff, the freshman out of Tampa, out of Hillsborough High School. And the Gators believe this guy is uh, – a playmaker along the lines of Percy Harvin. Well, that time he just tucked in behind everybody. You'd like to see Phil Trotwine turn inside instead of continuing to lead up field. You got to turn and hit somebody, you big fella. He still picked up uh, enough yards for a Florida first down to the 41. Urban Meyer telling Steve Babick that we would see Faison, and uh, on the first play of the second half, he gets the handoff. Deshaun Wynn gets the handoff on first and 10. And is dropped at the 41-yard line as uh, Golden Knights get a good uh, push from Kareem Reed, number 99, the senior out of Coral Springs. Immediately following every Florida football game, don't miss the Geico Gator postgame on Sun Sports. Sun Sports picks up where the network leaves off by giving viewers exclusive extended postgame coverage. Florida second down and 10. One back is Keystone Moore. And Moore with some nifty, or rather that is uh, Brandon James, or rather it is Deshaun Wynn. Deshaun Wynn. I Wynn. get it right. Yeah. Nice uh, little nifty inside running by see, Wynn. See what happens to you when you say Deshaun Wynn's just a plow horse going in there. All well, of a he sudden, made a nice move there. Deshaun Wynn shows you the quick feet. You know, good blocking up front. Everything caves down. Nice job by Drew Miller just driving everybody down. And then Deshaun Wynn does the rest with his feet. You'd like to see Jamal Canillas get that block there and uh, win off to the races. He's got 51 yards win on nine carries. Almost six yards per carry tonight. That's similar to last week before he banged up his shoulder, David. Yep. This time the fake to win. And Leak throwing to a wide open receiver, Dallas Baker. Baker with a nice move to the outside and is tripped up at the 13-yard line by Joe Burnett. A slow start tonight for number 81 for the Gators, but uh, now that's his fourth catch. That one goes for 32 yards. And David, this is all Chris Lee. He's got pressure right up the middle. See how he bides time with his feet, resets his feet, makes a good throw. He doesn't want to overshoot his wide open receiver. He takes something off it. Baker does the rest after the, after the catch, picking up additional yardage. Or catches for 81 yards for Baker. And not the way that the Golden Knights had hoped to start this second half after they gave up 400 yards in offense and 34 points to the Gators in the first half. Leak throwing, it's deflected and picked off. The Golden Knights with their second turnover taken away from the Gators in this ball game as Sharef Rashad Intercepts the ball in the end zone off of the deflection intended for Cornelius Ingram. 
And the Golden Knights with the, the first interception tonight and their second turnover against the Gators. They'll have the ball at the three-yard line. And I'm not sure if it was middle linebacker Corey Holt that got his hands on the football, but Chris Leak never saw the defender sitting there in the middle of the field, and he tries to force it in. It's actually the nose guard, big number 74, Keith Shalagan. Shalagan's not supposed to be back there, is he? No, you don't expect that, but... Oh, oh that's a safety. safety. Tony Joyner tackles the ball carrier in the end zone. Kevin Smith could not get out of there. Well, that's what happens, David, when you have a breakaway runner. He's got to realize you're backed up. you got to stay inside. That time he tried to bounce it outside. Tony Joyner playing up along the line of scrimmage is there to make the set, make the, the tackle. Now, right here, this play is set to go up, up inside, but he tries to bounce it outside, not being aware of where he's at on the football field. Tony Jordan from a strong safety position comes over and makes the tackle for a two-point safety. A high school quarterback, Joyner, had a great game last week and continues to sparkle for Florida's defense. The Ford F-150 or the Toyota Tundra? With available traction control, your Tundra's gripping that ramp so tight you're not worried about yanking that boat out of there. No, let the guy in an F-150 without traction control worry about stuff like that. The full-size Toyota Tundra. Get a grip. Now get $4,000 cash back plus the sport package discount for a total savings of $6,000 on the Tundra Double Cab. Toyota, moving forward. Tradition is part of this game. Great traditions last because they're based on the fundamentals of hard work, preparation, and the will to win. That's the Gator tradition, and that's why Simply Orange has become a tradition for the Gators. It's all about the fundamentals. Pure, quality, 100% orange juice. Not flavored, not sweetened, not from concentrate. A simply fresh squeeze taste experience. Simply orange, simply unfold around with. Urban Myers, Florida Gators uh, still pitching a shutout. And the safety makes it a 36 to nothing game. And uh, George O'Leary has not experienced too many nights like this one for his Golden Knights. Although two years ago, UCF was 0-11, one of only six teams to come back from a, an 0 for season and go to a bowl game the next year. By the way, Florida is another one of those teams. Remember Charlie Pell's first year? In 1979, the Gators were 0-10-1. In 1980, they won eight games and uh, went to a bowl game. So only six teams have done that, have gone from zero wins to a bowl. UCF has won Florida back in 79 and 80, another. And, and it's been said that uh, George O'Leary O'Leary came in in 2004 and looked at the talent there and saw that he really didn't have the kind of talent that he wanted or needed to play his type of football and really made it tough on guys to find out who really wanted to play football and got rid of the guys that didn't want to be there and you know now he's got a good football team got some good young talent here. He's done more on the kickoff after the safety to the 32 yard line. Freshman Brandon James was back there, the uh, speedster from St. Augustine, who did not play last week, number 25. But uh, they kicked it away from the freshman and into the hands of Keystone Moore. I'll tell you what, uh, the Gator medical staff deserves a lot of credit for getting number 25 back onto the field so quickly. He had uh, knee surgery just about, uh, I guess, three or four weeks ago. Dr. Pete and Delicato and company handling uh, that task and uh, here is uh, the youngster in week number two ready to go. I tell you what Dr. Pete's so good that uh, even the Miami Dolphins call him when they need they need uh, yep. someone to work on uh, their key guys. Play action leak. Looking downfield and goes to his uh, safety valve man. That's Percy Harvin. Harvin who had the 58 yard touchdown catch in the first half. Just a uh, sensational run after the catch. He also had about a 30 yard play and fumbled at the end of it in the first half. So uh, this guy is he's going to make a lot of big plays for the Gators in coming years. Well, he's the kind of type of guy that you want to get the ball in his hands or try and get it to him at least eight to ten times a ball game because you know if you do, he's going to make something good happen. And uh, he's done it two weeks in a row. And this is just a true freshman. Making big plays. By the way, Leak is over 300 yards passing tonight, the seventh time in his Gator career. The Gators have not lost a game that he's thrown 300. That looks like that's a pretty good bet to, to keep uh, going here in this one. Andre Caldwell make, makes a couple of Golden Knights miss him. 
And Shalligan is able to make the tackle about uh, 17 yards upfield at the 47-yard line. Make that a 12-yard pickup for the Gators. Andre Caldwell, another playmaker in this offense, Nat. The problem that Dan Mullen and, and Urban Meyer have is distributing the football, <laughs> trying to figure out who that's a nice problem to have. When last year you had an offense that too often didn't have enough playmakers available, but now the Gators have a lot of them. That's a, that's a great problem to have. And, you know, you got so many guys running in and out of the line of scrimmage, you just don't know who's going to get the ball and who should get the ball. Here's another. Faison, a high school quarterback in Tampa at Hillsborough. He's got a lot of skills, and on that little end around, he picks up good yardage once again. And, David, this is where you get your running game. Your playmakers are your speedy receivers, your slot receivers, the guys that come around on the end around the, the slot sweep or the slot reverse, and they pick up chunks of yardage at a time, 10, 12 yards per carry. So that's how you run the football in this offense. It's not just running between the tackles with the fullback or the tailback. By the way, Faison is a backup quarterback, an emergency quarterback for the Gators. He hasn't worked at that position, but if something happened to uh, Leak and Tebow, then Faison would become a factor there. This time, Leak throws it away, getting pressure. One of the few times tonight that UCF has been able to get pressure on the quarterback. And that time, a nice job by Big 44, Antonio Wallace, the sophomore from Vero Beach, to get in the face of Chris Leak. And Chris Leak had two receivers open, but because of Wallace being right in his face, had to throw that ball away. All right, Leak now is 16 for 24, Nat, and has had four drops. <laughs> so you, you give him those four, he's 20 out of 24 with about 300 and almost 400 yards probably if he, if he has those other four receptions. But he'll be the first one to tell you that he'd like to have that, uh, that pick that he threw yeah. back uh, where he made a mistake, tried to force it in. Gator coaches say this guy has the best hands on the team. Cornelius Ingram, the converted quarterback, catches everything you throw to it. Sheriff uh, Rashad made the tackle, a 12-yard pickup. Ingram's second catch of the night. And they come with that. They, they were fortunate enough last time to get the interceptions. So they bring the nose tackle back out, Keith Shalogan. <laughs> and uh, this time, they get the ball to Ingram in a hurry before he gets there. One back set as Leak rolls to the left. And his pass is out of the hands of uh, Ingram, trying to stay in bounds and catch the ball. And he, he was out of bounds when that ball came to him. Well, that time, Chris just took too long of uh, looking downfield. He wanted to go deep. And uh, as time started to run out, the thing that happens is Cornelius Ingram has also got to realize where he's at on the sideline. Here's a guy just learning to play this position, David. He'll learn that as you get close to the sideline, two or three yards from the sideline, you got to stop. You know, you can't keep running because the quarterback will lead you out of bounds there. Ingram, a guy that almost quit the football team. Disappointed, frustrated with the lack of playing time after a couple of years as a, as a backup quarterback. And it just goes to show you, you know, so much of what... Uh, Irvin Marr talks about is that once you play for the Gators, you'll always part of that family because Vernell Brown was the man that came in and actually talked to Cornelius Ingram and talked to him about how tough it was for him. He was a highly talented guy coming out of Gainesville just like Cornelius Ingram is. And uh, basically it hurt because everybody's asking you, how come you're not playing? You should be playing. You're better than everybody else. You know, and that's your friends telling you that. Well, it's more difficult when you're in your hometown, too. Oh, without a sure. doubt. But, makes, makes the pressure even greater. But the fact that when, once Vernell Brown talked to him and told him about his experience and how things worked out, Cornelius Ingram is happy. He's glad he stayed. And, you know, he's getting his playing time now. And he's got a chance to play at the next level. And there he is again with a shoestring grab inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Cornelius Ingram, tremendous size at 6'4", 230. In his uh, third year with the Gators, a redshirt sophomore, played a little quarterback against Louisiana Tech last year, played tight end in the Outback Bowl, and uh, last week made uh, really his big splash on the scene with a catch, and now has three catches tonight against UCF. And, and he's a guy that has the uh, kind of athleticism and talent that reminds you of a guy like Ben Truth that can do it all. So you, you, you want to get try and get him the football as much as possible. And the Gators will take a timeout with 8.43 left in the third, leading the Golden Knights, shutting them out. 36 to nothing. We'll be back. Third quarter.
quarter action, 8.43 to go. Florida 36, Central Florida nothing. The Gators have been led by quarterback Chris Sleek, who has thrown for three scores. And back in 1999, the only other meeting between Florida and Central Florida, there was another Gator quarterback who had a big game. The Gators, though, do it first of all on defense. And then Doug Johnson has the table set. He hits Daryl Jackson for a score early in the game. In the first half, Doug Johnson threw for three touchdown passes. Here's one to Travis Taylor. And Doug Johnson finished that game with almost 300 yards in one half, and that was it for Doug. The Gators won that game 58-27. Johnson, uh, Steve also wore number 12. Leak throwing for Ingram in the end zone, and it is knocked away and incomplete. A good defensive play that time on Ingram. And uh, it was Marlon Williams, the free safety, that knocked that ball away. Gets pressure once again up the middle. Nice job of just throwing the ball out, out front. And, you know, this is one that uh, Ingram's got to make that catch. It's, you know, to be a big-time tight end or big-time receiver, you've got to be able to help your quarterback out and make that catch. Nice job yeah. by Williams of scripting it out, but you, if you're a big, strong guy, you got to be able to pull that down, baby. You don't get many opportunities to get in the end zone, so you got to take advantage of all of them. Second down and goal at the nine. Leak's throw is caught for the touchdown. It's Cornwell, and the Gators have scored 42. Andre Caldwell with the second touchdown catch tonight. And, and David, this is a team effort, but I go back to what I just said about Cornelius Ingram. You don't get many opportunities. When you drop the football, one of those other guys are going to step up and get your touchdown. You know, I, I remember playing with Dan Marino, and I actually dropped the football for his 100th touchdown. Well, I'm not in the record books. Joe Rose is because the next you play, had your chance. I had my chance. So it just goes to show you, <laughs> you got to take advantage. But a nice throw by Chris Leak to Andre Caldwell, giving the Bubba Caldwell his second touchdown of the year. Snap infraction against the kicking team, snapping the ball before they're ready to play. Well, these extra points have been a nightmare tonight uh, for yeah. the Gators. Uh, if uh, Urban Meyer's <laughs> looking for something, to rail about this week, this is certainly going to be at the top of his list. Well, when you play good teams like Tennessee and Auburn and Alabama and the teams in the SAC, you cannot afford to make those kind of mistakes on special teams. This is Eric Nappy, and there's a block. So the extra point is no good. That ball is live, and uh, Urban Meyer saying, let's get on that football and uh, make this a dead ball. But the Golden Knights block the extra point, and with 8.32 to play in the third, it's Florida 42. UCF nothing. Leak with four touchdown passes. Nestled in the... It's a football, a must-have for the Gator fan. Florida putting a whipping on UCF tonight. 42 to nothing, 8.32 to go in the third quarter. And, David, the Gators have had the ball nine possessions. They've scored on six of them. And the other three has been a punt, a fumble, and an interception where they've stopped themselves. He has kicking off again for the Gators. And the ball is brought out to the 21-yard line by Curtis Francis. Tim Tebow, uh, not an easy thing to do to warm up while wearing a headset. <laughs> Tebow seems to be able to manage even that. He played one series in the first half and took the Gators to a 77-yard touchdown. Now we're going to see more of Mr. Tebow before tonight is done. That is for sure. Chris Leak with four touchdown passes. And uh, he threw for four against Kentucky last year. The pass is intended for Willie Thornton, and it is incomplete. Let's get a look at Leak's fourth touchdown pass of the night just moments ago. And this time you got a good clean pocket, every good blocking up front, and then he just sort of leads him in there. There's nobody in the middle of the field this time. He saw the nose guard, Keith Shalligan, actually come in, so therefore he knew he had a wide open uh, center of the field for the ball to him. Chris now uh, Matt is 10th on the all-time SEC touchdowns list. Touchdown pass is thrown. That's deflected away by Cohen. But Chris Leak now with uh, he had 68 coming in. He's got 72 touchdown passes and move past Tommy Hodson of LSU into 10th place all time in the Southeastern Conference record books for touchdowns thrown. Uh, well, coming in here, we knew that Chris Leak was one of the best passers or pure passers coming out of high school in the country as he threw for 185 touchdowns in high school alone. So that's not surprising. Yeah. 
especially when you get the playmakers he have around him to work with. Stephen Moffitt trying to make a play on third down and 10 for UCF. Swings it out, and it's dropped. It's been that kind of a night for Kevin Smith, the sophomore that ran for almost 1,200 yards as a freshman, was Conference USA's freshman of the year a year ago, but has not had uh, much success tonight for George O'Leary and the UCF Golden Knights. Well, David, let's talk defense. First series, UCF 46 yards. Second series, nine yards. Third series, six yards. Third series, fourth series, one yard. Fifth series, three yards. Sixth series, one yard. What a shutout being pitched by this defense. Golden Knights have only four first downs in this game. Four. 7.45 left in the third quarter. And that punt off the side of the foot of Allen Horn and out of bounds. When you start talking about defensive dominance, Man. and uh, after getting that 46 yards on the first series, after that you've been able to get nine yards. You have not been able to, in this past series, zero yards. So this, this is thoroughly uh, the Gator defense just manhandling an offense that is one of the most experienced, especially the offensive line. They came into this ball game with the most 90, experienced. 95 starts on the offensive line, yep. and that defensive line is just destroyed. Them. Yep. Tim Tebow is back. His second opportunity to run the Florida offense tonight. And he'll roll out to his right on the option. He pitches it to Percy Harvin. That is a deadly duo for the future. One would suspect with uh, Tebow running the option with Percy Harvin. That might be a flash uh, into the future right there, Nat. Well, it's a tough play to cover because you got Keystone Moore, you got to worry about him on the shovel pass, and then you got Percy Harvin outside. You know, you like to see just a little bit better spacing on the uh, option route, but when you got the kind of athleticism that those two guys got, all you got to do is just get one of them the ball in open space. Harvin uh, managed uh, eight yards on that carry. The give is to Keystone Moore, trying to bounce to the outside, and he bounced into the grasp of uh, several UCF defenders for no gain on the play. In fact, he'll lose a couple. Tim Tebow, the freshman, came to the University of Florida in January to get a, a head start, graduated from high school, a homeschooled young man, and he put on a show, Nat, in his first half opportunity to run the Florida offense. Yeah, he, he beat him with his legs and his arms, and the thing that Tim Tebow shows you, when he starts throwing the football, David, he looks like a running back. He tucks that ball away. He's not carrying it like a quarterback. He's carrying it like a running back that means business. Urban Meyer says uh, he's a gorilla playing quarterback. He's a big, strong young fella, and he's going to run it behind that big left tackle and pick up a first down to the UCF 32-yard line. Time you had big uh, Maurice Hurt, freshman out of Milges, Mil Milges, Milgesville, Georgia. That's nice job of just tucking in behind him. Carlton Metter, too. Carlton Metter, you, you, you pull your guard and your, and your uh, right, right tackle, and quarterback just puts his hands on his butt, rides it through the hole, gets the first down. Ronnell Sandy is there to make the tackle on Tebow. Marcus Manson is in uh, at the running back position for the Gators. And Manson gets a handoff, and down he goes behind the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line. That tackle made by Kareem Reed, number 99. You've got Maurice Hurt playing the right guard position in place of uh, Drew Miller, getting some playing time at that time. Nice job by big number 99. Kareem Reed are just shooting the gap, making the play. UCF has been in that four-man uh, alignment. Really, not many surprises tonight by the Golden Knights defensively. Tebow steps up, gets hit from behind. The ball comes out, and it is recovered by the Golden Knights. And it is a fumble and a recovery. He was trying to throw the ball, but... Clearly, it appeared that his arm was hit as he was drawing back the throw. And uh, it was Welsh, Chris Welsh, that knocked the ball loose for the Golden Knights. And this is where you, you learn. You've got to gain that experience to realize that just because everybody got pushed past you, you've got to take off and go because the pursuit is coming from behind. You can't see it. Ball's knocked loose by Rex Hill and then recovered 
by number 92, Rex Hill, a junior out of Marathon, Florida. Well, he's a talented uh, freshman, but he is a freshman, Tim Tebow. And that right there is why Florida fans will feel awfully good with Chris Leak on the field next week at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. The pass is caught. And a first down is picked up by Kenny Jackson, the senior from Lehigh, Florida, with his first reception tonight. But uh, seriously, Nat, uh, Tebow, as talented as he is, you go into Knoxville, Tennessee next week, and uh, you got to feel awfully good about a senior going in there to operate that Florida offense. And you know, Tebow's been able to get some good experience tonight. He's going to be a great player down the line. Well, when you go into Tennessee and you start talking about 100,000-plus hostile fans, you know, you've got to have some experience out there. And, you know, yeah. Tim Tebow is going to get his opportunity to play some big ball games. And, uh, you know, next week, it's, it's really Chris's job. The key is to get him as much experience as possible so that as you go forward and you need him, he can come in and spell Chris as well as can play in certain situations. That tackle was made by Marquis Anderson, a true freshman from Fort Myers, who has played his way onto the field. There's uh, the... Young man who just fumbled the ball a moment ago for the Gators. Turnovers have not been kind to Florida tonight. They have yet to force a turnover. One of our storylines for tonight, but it has not been a factor in the game. Moffitt will keep it on the quarterback keeper. The draw across the midfield strike. And Jarvis Moss on the tackle. And David, this play looked like it had big numbers on it, but Jarvis Moss fights off his would-be blocker and gets it by the ankles, pulls it down short of the first down. At the start of this play, he's got a big hole. It looked like he's got everything there with a block in front of him, but nice job by Moss of evading the block and then making the tackle in the open field. Holden Knights crossing midfield, a rarity tonight. Florida 42 to nothing late in the third quarter. And the handoff goes to Jason Peters, the big fullback, stuffed near the line of scrimmage. Brandon Sider, big number 93, Stephen Harris in on that play. It's good to see Harris on the field. He and Marcus Thomas held out of uh, the game last week. Outstanding job by Brandon Siler from the middle linebacker slot, uh, filling the hole. You know, everybody takes their gap. Brandon Siler fills his gap, makes the tackle, gets some help from Stephen Harris down at the bottom of the pile. Harris, uh, number 93, has had some off-the-field issues, but uh, back in the good graces and... Making some plays here in the third quarter tonight. Jermaine McCullum makes the stop on Mike Walker. Very quiet night for Walker. Second time tonight, David, when they've needed a uh, first down on short, short yardage that they've run the receiver in motion, brought the quarterback out to get him outside the pocket and just, you know, throw it to the receiver for a two-yard gain, picking up a first down. Good, safe play. Quarterback with a run pass option. Moffitt stepping up, throwing deep down the sideline, incomplete, just overthrown. Anderson, the freshman, with the coverage on Kenny Jackson. Well, David, I, I, you, you say just overthrown. That, to me, that ball hit him right smack in the hands. It's, you know, when you're down 42 zip and quarterback, everybody's working their, their fanny off, and you're, you're the guy, you've got to make that catch. Uh, you know, Steven Jackson knows that he'll be the first one to tell you this is one that he should have come down with. Heading to the sideline, replaced by Willie Fortin. And it'll be second and 10 at the 48-yard line of the Gators. Moffitt, pressure coming up the middle. He stands in there and takes the punishment and throws a nice ball to Thornton for about a, uh, an eight-yard gain. Well, immediately following every Florida football game, don't miss the Geico Gator postgame on Sun Sports. Sun Sports picks up where the network leads off by giving viewers exclusive extended postgame Gator coverage. David Steele, Nat Moore, Steve Babbick tonight from the swamp in Gainesville, Florida. Led only 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, but uh, scored four times in the second quarter. And has added another touchdown and a safety in the third. Quarterback draw again. Moffitt trying to get the first down on third and three. And he comes up short. Tackled by Jarvis Moss. Moss is another guy 
for the Gators, who really is coming on strong after a, a slow start in his college career, had that bizarre hip infection that uh, baffled physicians. They finally figured out what it was and uh, got him some antibiotics, some serious IV antibiotics in him. And, and since he's been healthy, man, he comes on every week and seems to get better with every week of his football career at Florida. Well, he'll tell you that there was quite a few times that uh, he should have come up with the sack. Great coverage there, but I think the Gators are going to get hit with an interference call on Anderson. True freshman out of Fort Myers, Dunbar's High School. And a very aggressive play on that one. Maybe got there a little bit too soon. He's been called for pass interference. Let's take another look. Pass interference, number 37 of the defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, first down. And David, he did everything right, except he grabbed with that left arm as he tried to go around or swat the ball out. And, you know, that's where they called him. Anytime they see you wrap onto the receiver, even if you time it perfect, nine out of ten times, you're going to get hit with the interference call. Going man to man against a very talented receiver and Walker. The Golden Knights with their best scoring threat tonight. And the long pass is overthrown, intended for Thornton again. And another flag is thrown. Willie Thornton had single coverage. And it uh, looks like we might have back to back pass interference calls. This will be a hold uh, on the Florida defensive back. 12 of the defense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. I don't think it's number 12. I think he really meant either. number 18. Tremaine, uh, Tremaine McCullough. And you know, anytime you're getting beat as a defensive corner, you're taught grab him, hold him, do whatever you do. You have to. Don't give up the touchdown. We'll line up and, and, and play another down. So, you know, smart play on Tremaine's part because he was beat by a couple steps. Now the Golden Knights at the 24. Moffitt back to throw. And his pass is caught at about the 19-yard line. A gain of uh, four the yards as Mike Walker pulls in another one, his fifth catch of the ball game. UCF trying to get on the scoreboard late in the third quarter. You know, Mike Walker's working against Markeith Anderson at 5'9". Walker is 6'2". He throw the ball up high, lets him, you know, goes up and catches the ball in his hands. Very difficult cover for Anderson. Walker coming off uh, knee surgery from late last season. Unable to play the, the last couple of games for the Golden Knights as they played Tulsa in the Conference USA title game. Walker with his fifth catch of the game. And that should be a first down, a five-yard pickup. Tremaine McCollum on the stop. UCF with its deepest penetration of the night. 42 seconds left in the third. And, and what we're seeing is, you know, all these passes are being completed right now, David. It's against the second team secondary. You know, all the Jordan and, and uh, Reggie Nelson, I mean, those guys are out of the ball game. Uh, Ryan Smith, they're out of the ball game right now. Anderson, a true freshman in one corner. McCollum, a fifth-year senior. On the other corner, John Curtis uh, playing a strong safety position. And it's first down. Gators coming with pressure. Moffitt's throw is dropped at the five-yard line. Anderson, or rather, uh, yeah, it was Anderson covering Willie Thornton at the five. That ball had some zip on it, and uh, Thornton just weren't able to come down with it. The Gators come with pressure right up the middle. I tell you what, you, you have to, you have to like Stephen Moffat. The way he stands in there, takes the punishment, delivers the football, and puts it on the money. There's a reason he completed nearly 60% of his passes last year. Moffat under center, one back. And his pass is dropped again. McCollum with good coverage, but that ball should have been caught as well. Tremaine McCollum covering Rocky Ross. Sophomore from Jacksonville out of Bowles. Had a couple of first-half catches. Has been very quiet since early in the ballgame. And all these are good throws. you got tall receivers. Rocky Ross is 6'2". He's working against, against McCullough, who's only 5'8". You throw the ball up there, catchable ball. 
Raiders have both McCollum twins on the field right now, yeah. Jermaine and Tremaine. Moffitt pressured from the outside. Now looking for an open man, and it is caught. Should have been a touchdown, but Thornton couldn't bring that one in. Nice job by Moffitt to scramble and find a wide open slot to throw that ball, and then Thornton could not make the catch. Yeah, and it looked like uh, Stephen Moffitt was just going to take off a run because he had a lot of open field there, but he had a wide open receiver, and so he pulls up aware of where he's at and then just tries to get the ball to him. Right here, he's got plenty of open field. That's another catchable ball. Each one of these guys, are, you know, they're just trying so hard that they're just not doing things naturally. Fourth down. Pressure from the outside. Harvey hits the man, and the pass is incomplete. And a penalty flag is thrown. It probably is going to be a hold, I would think, because, you know, Derek Harvey came flying in there, and the offensive lineman did everything but tackle him to keep him from hitting Stephen Moffitt. Well, I'll tell you what, David, he got a good jump off the ball right here, bottom of your screen. He just beats the tight end. You got a tight end trying to block it, Mike Merritt, and he just has no chance. Well, at least for now, Florida protecting its shutout. And George O'Leary talking with uh, Willie Thornton, the man who dropped a couple of passes on that drive, one that uh, would have been a touchdown. Uh, and, and you just have to feel for Stephen Moffitt uh, how hard he's playing and how well he's playing to have as many drop balls as he had on that particular drive alone. That's the end of the third quarter from the Swamp. The Gators 42. The Golden Knights of UCF nothing. Florida looking every bit the part of a top-ranked football team. Score complete. Sellout crowd from the Swamp, and we head to the fourth quarter, celebrating 100 years of football at the University of Florida. The Gators on the verge of going 2-0 on this young football season. Even more impressive this week than last week. And here is a look at Florida's possessions tonight. Touchdown, fumble, punt, then touchdown, 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 touchdown. Four in a row. That was all in the second quarter. And an interception, a touchdown in the third, and the fumble. And uh, Tim Tebow, who fumbled on Florida's last possession, is back in at quarterback with the Gators at the 14-yard line. And the handoff goes to Marcus Manson. Sophomore from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, getting uh, his first carry of the season. Did not play last week, was a little bit banged up, and is getting an opportunity in the fourth quarter here tonight against UCF. Chance Henderson made the tackle for the Golden Knights. Florida's uh, running game has been solid tonight. And we keep talking about uh, the storylines, Nat, and, uh, and how the Gators will be looking for someone to emerge at the running back position, but it's been Yardage by committee, and here's Mon Williams getting his first carry as a Florida Gator, the freshman out of Mesquite, Texas. True freshman. And uh, the Gators uh, thought about redshirting this young man, Matt, but when uh, the Sean Wynn got banged up last week, Manson has had some injury problems as well. Urban Meyer decided to give him a look here tonight. So, Mon Williams, a talented young freshman. He rushed for about 1,700 yards and 17 touchdowns last year as a senior at Mesquite, Texas. He's out there on the field. And, and you, you need a bevy of backs to run this offense because the running backs actually run between the tackles 99% of the time, so they take a pounding. Tebow throwing, intended for the tight end Tate Casey. A name we have not uh, heard uh, much about here in the early part of the season, but a very talented tight end, another capable playmaker. He had uh, four touchdown catches, remember, and eight receptions in his freshman year, Nat, and has five touchdown catches in his career, but no catches so far in this young season. But I tell you, I tell you what I like about Tate Casey. It's not about all the touchdown catches he's had, but the guy that's a team player. He's you know, become a good we blocker. We know that he can catch the football. Yep. They've asked him to become a blocker. They want to run the football. They want to be able to utilize him more as a blocker, and he has done a, a yeoman's job at learning how to block and getting the job done. That ball popped up into the hands of uh, Burnett. I think he was trying to stay out of the way of it, and then at the last minute decided to field it. 
And so Eric Wilbur has been a, sort of a lonely guy tonight. He's not had many punting opportunities. UCF will take the football with 13.26 to go in the game. Crazy Buffet. West Palm Beach is number one all-you-can-eat Asian fusion buffet featuring sushi, sashimi, Peking duck, seafood, salads, even desserts. Don't forget the hibachi grill, steak, and happy hour. Party facilities and catering are available for your birthday. We're this again, award winner in 2002, 2003, and 2004. Crazy Buffet, West Palm Beach's number one Asian fusion buffet. 2030 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, two blocks west of I-95. Let's go crazy. It's back. The Chevy Model Year End Event. We're moving out the last of the 06 Chevy models. So make your move. They're going fast. More Americans choose Chevy. Claim yours before they're gone. See your Southern Chevy dealers. At SunTrust, we see beyond how you're banking to how you're living. That's why we put 2,700 ATMs where you need them and have 1,700 locations on the way to where you're going. You can always get a live voice on the phone 24-7. And you have the power of the whole bank at your fingertips online. So you can spend more time how you want to instead of how you have to. SunTrust, seeing beyond money. It's television's most prestigious fishing tournament, FLW Outdoors. Look at the bend in that rod. The ultimate weekly challenge in competitive fishing. Woo! Huge fish. Follow the world's top anglers as they go head to head in a race to hook the day's most elusive catch. And battle it out for the right to be crowned world champion. FLW Outdoors, Sundays on FSN. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I've I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan, big, big fan. Well, thank you. And listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm gonna have to block you. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. It has been a dominating performance on both sides Ladies of the football for the Florida please. Gators. And Chris Lee Tonight's having a career night, night, throwing for more yards than in any game in his career this evening. And four touchdown passes for Lee. This one to Percy Harvin back in the first quarter. Leak once again looking for one of his favorite targets. Uh, you would have to call Dallas Baker his number one man, I guess. But he has a lot of options, Nat, as he uh, has found Andre Caldwell twice tonight. Well, it's just great to see Andre Caldwell back getting in the thick of things. You know, one of the things the coaches wanted to do was to get the ball in his hands, get him more involved, and tonight they've been able to do so as he's come up with two touchdown grabs. Leak with 352 yards passing tonight, four touchdowns. He did throw one interception. With those 352 yards, a career high, as we pointed out, 19 for 29. And coming into this game, we talked to Dan Mullen Earlier in the week, Nat, he told us that this UCF secondary was an outstanding big-time secondary college football. And maybe they just haven't been able to get enough pressure on Chris Leak. Their front four really never able to penetrate Florida's offensive line. But Leak just had a tremendous night. Yeah, but, but at, at times when they really had an opportunity to get there, Chris has done some things by, on his own with his feet by sliding around, making plays. Here's a good look at how well the defense has shut this team out. And they forced him to punt, safety punt, and then on downs, you know, nothing. They've given up nothing. They gave up 46 yards the first drive and 56 yards the second drive, and that was with the backup uh, secondary in there. So, you know, outstanding job by this defense, and it all starts up front with Marcus Thomas, Stephen Harris, Joe Coyne, uh, McDonald, and Jarvis Moss. I mean, you name it, those five, six guys have gotten it done. Moffitt scrambling, running for his life, and Brandon Spikes comes up to make the hit on him. Another true freshman out of Shelby, North Carolina. This freshman class, Urban Meyer and his staff brought in. Boy, you got big-time players on both sides of the ball. You're going to hear a lot about number 51, 6'3", 240, 
a true freshman out of Shelby, North Carolina, and uh, very much in the mold of Brandon Seiler, who's kind of taken spikes under his wing. And, and that's what it's about, the, the uh, upperclassmen taking the young guys and showing them the ropes. Earlier we talked about, you know, getting the stripes off the helmet with uh, jo Jamal Cornelius doing it with Percy Harvin. You know, that's what it's all about, helping each other, because you were a freshman at some point yourself. Moffitt scrambling and throws it up for grabs. Almost picked off, incomplete. McCollum was there. Jermaine McCollum and Dustin Doe had a chance to pick that one off. GatorZone.com, the premier site for Gator Sports News. Read the latest scores, check out scores, and watch live games. Plus, you can get the best in Gator merchandise all at GatorZone.com. Golden Knights punting for the ninth time tonight on fourth and ten. Beautifully kicked ball by Horn. And again, the Gators refusing to fair catch. This time it's Brandon James, the freshman from St. Augustine, hanging in there. And Florida takes over at about the 10-yard line, leading 42 to nothing against the Golden Knights of UCF. Rick Wilcoxon is a real Geico customer, not an actor. So to help tell a story, we hired an actor. Originally, I switched to Geico to save money, but then I was in an accident. Yeah, that's right. I was in an accident. I got on the phone and called Geico. Yeah. Hello. Hey, how's it going? After a few days, I had my repair check. It was fantastic. Yeah, I got the check. Got my car fixed. It's my birthday. Fixed my bumper. New taillights. Geico. Real service. Real savings. It's my birthday. Every night, there's just one place to be. The best damn sports show, period. Come on in and be our guest for Sports Television's Nightly Party. The world's greatest late night sports show is just getting started. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on FSN. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I've I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan, big, big fan. Well, thank you. And listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm gonna have to block you. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. College football on Sunsports is brought to you in part by the Alachua County Visitors and Convention Bureau, where nature and culture meet. Earlier you heard David Still and Matt Moore talk about Cornelius Ingram thinking about leaving. He decides to stay. A big part of that was this conversation with Vernell Brown. Vernell, being a hometown player and dealing with that pressure, what did you talk about with Cornelius to help him at least find a way to make that decision? Uh, basically, you know, I just kind of gave him some perspective, from, you know, from both sides. Like I told him, I wasn't there to tell him you know, to stay or to go. I was just there to tell him, you know, what things would look like as far as if he stayed and what it may look like as far as if you go. And, you know, you can't let others, you know, make decisions for you. When you're in bad situations, you want to be in it because you put yourself in them, not because others put you in He made a good decision to stay, didn't he? Well, he made a great decision to stay, uh, to stay. as you can see tonight. He's out there, you know, playing well. Thanks for now. There's Cornelius Ingram and uh, well, the Gators, uh, the coaching staff, the fans, the Gator Nation, awfully glad that Ingram decided to stay around. As he's got a chance to become a tremendous receiver, perhaps even play at the next level. That catch uh, a moment ago was uh, by Riley Cooper with his first reception, a freshman out of Sarasota. Or rather Clearwater out of Central Catholic High in Clearwater. As Tebow hands off. Uh, Tebow keeps the ball, lost a yard on that <laughs> on that play. Riley is a highly touted athlete, Nat, uh, tremendous baseball player as well. Nice little play here. Yeah, they're trying to set up the screen. Yeah, and getting it flowing one uh, way. It just took a little too long. You, you know, you would like to see your tackle stay up. That time he threw and defender was able to jump around him and get back in and make the play. But they had a nice play set up to Cooper. Just the uh, timing of the execution was off. He is split wide to the right. Three receivers to the left. The left-hander rolling left. And Tebow shakes one man like he's not there and then steps out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Four-yard pickup for Tim Tebow. 
And that time, Tim had a guy open early, but uh, just wasn't sure, didn't want to take a chance. You see uh, in your photo, in your picture there, a little coaching by Urban Meyer, letting him know you've got to get rid of the football. But, you know, when you're a freshman, especially if you've fumbled it once already, you don't want to make another mistake, especially down here on your side of the 50-yard uh, line. And leading 42 to nothing. But with a freshman quarterback, uh, do you want to go ahead and run pretty much your, your without your offense? Oh, you got to, because how, how do you get him ready to play if you don't run your offense, the things that you'd like to run with him in a crucial situation? Throwing for the first down, the pass is caught at the 37-yard line. A first and 10 for the Florida Gators. The catch made by David Nelson, a redshirt freshman out of Wichita Falls, Texas. David Nelson is a 6'5 freshman, but watch him take that big body and get down on the ground to make this catch. That's what you got to do. You've got to bail your quarterback out. If he's struggling, he's not going to make a perfect throw all the time. Good receivers make plays to help their quarterback out. That time, David Nelson went down and come up with the reception. First down, Gators. And you look at a guy like David Nelson, penalty decline. First down. How many programs could David Nelson play every Saturday, pretty much every <laughs> snap for? But he is uh, locked in behind some very talented receivers. But he's only going to get better playing behind those guys because that means he'll have to raise his level of play so that uh, when he gets his opportunity, he can take advantage of it. Ryan Botang, number 17, is in motion. And a flag is thrown as uh, Tebow was going to keep the football, an option to his right, but the penalty flag comes in with 9.42 on the clock. And Florida's offense has gotten a little bit herky-jerky, as you might expect. Right to the snap. False start, number 77 on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And, and David, right now, for our, our viewers at home, this is the second team that's out there. This second team offensive line, second team quarterback, second team running back. Uh, I, I guess you call the receivers third team because most of the second team guys have already played a lot. Five yard penalty. Tebow is hit as he throws, almost picked off. And the pass falling incomplete. He was hit by Ronnell Sandy. He never saw him coming. You know, this is his, you know, this is a side where he should be able to see, but he's looking one way the whole time. He's locked in on the receiver. And because of that, Ronell Sandy is able to come around on, from his blitzing linebacker slot and get a piece of that ball as he's trying to throw the football. Florida leading 34 to nothing at the half. Thibault tried to toss it forward. Uh, that is going to be an incomplete pass unless it was juggled and then caught by UCF. They say they've got it, and uh, they do. The official indication is for UCF football. Travis Timmons is the man who picked it off. Thibault trying to shovel them past that ball forward. It was deflected around and tipped them in control by the Golden Knights. Well, and, and this is where, you know, you've got to be careful. These are the kind of mistakes you can't. Ball, ball hits the ground. Or was it his foot? Uh, Let's see again. Yep, ball hits his foot and kicks it up in the air. <laughs> oh, man. Not many breaks tonight for the Golden Knights, but that one goes their way. And they have the ball at the 36-yard line. UCF has not turned the ball over tonight. How surprising is that when you consider the Gators, as we've talked all, all night long, are a team that forces a lot of turnovers. Urban Meyer's teams... They get after you and they force turnovers, but not tonight. They're minus four in, in the turnover category as Kyle Israel, the backup quarterback for the Golden Knights, is in the game out of Orlando's University High School. And, and that just shows you, even though they're outmanned here tonight, that you know UCF is a very well-coached football team that don't make a lot of mistakes, don't put the ball up for grabs, and, and uh, they, they hold on to the football when they get it in their hands with a chance to run with it. Israel, 6'2", 230. And uh, the Golden Knights are going to be down around the 10-yard line as Kenny Jackson with the play and brought down by Marky Anderson. 24 yards on that play for the Golden Knights, and they threaten for the second time tonight. Gators come with a blitz. Nice job once again of picking it up. They come with a zone blitz on the backside, and Anderson just gives the receiver Jackson way too much room. Easy pits and catch there between Israel and Jackson. Israel only played in one game last year for the Golden Knights. That was against Southern Mississippi. And 
and his handoff to uh, Philip Smith, the freshman, a true freshman out of Mansfield, Texas, number 30. Might have gotten a yard to the 10. Immediately following every Florida football game, don't miss the Geico Gator postgame on Sun Sports. Sun Sports picks up where the network leaves off by giving viewers exclusive extended postgame Gator coverage. Well, when you look at this UCF team, you know, they're down 42 zip, and uh, there's no quit in them, David. You know, they, they're still fighting, similar to Southern Mississippi, so says a lot for Conference USA. Florida's getting a strong dose of CUSA the first two weeks of the season. Two of the better teams in that conference. The flag is dropped as Israel keeps and takes it to the six-yard line. Ryan Stamper, number 41, a redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, made the tackle. But this one is going to come back if the Gators elect to take the penalty. No, they won't have a choice, will they? It'll be five yards marked off. Illegal motion. Yeah, it's automatic. And this could be a break for UCF. Illegal formation offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard company previous spot. We play second down. Because as you get closer down to the goal line, you know, all of a sudden the end line as well as the sidelines become a extra defender. So by getting a little bit more room to operate, it'll give them an opportunity to try and get those receivers through the middle of that field. Second down again, this time Ball spotted at the 16. Israel short drop and the ball is caught. Jackson once again, the senior from Lehigh. Started his college career out in California, Bakersfield Community College. Double slant route and this time Gators are in a zone defense. You see everybody's in position coming up, making the tackle after the catch. You know, no one's locked in man to man. Outstanding job by the McCullough. Time out. Central Florida. Jermaine, and then also number four. Wandy Pierre-Louis. Wandy Pierre. Another freshman out of uh, Naples. We've got timeout with 6.29 to play in the fourth. Florida leading it 42 to nothing. Jeez, that's a big truck. Biggest cab, the all-new Dodge Ram Mega Cab. Where's the truck? Yeah, it's that big. Hey kids, if you played orange and blue, then we've got something just for you. It's the KTK Gainesville Sun Gator Kids Club. Albert invites you to join, and for just $21, you'll get your Gator Kids Club t-shirt, official membership card, plus all sorts of discounts and free admission to see exciting Gator action throughout the season. And siblings can join for just $10. It's easy to join. Just call 1-800-34-GATOR and sign up today. The KTK Gainesville Sun Gator Kids Club. Albert is waiting for you. At Checkers Right Side Drive-Thru, we would like to congratulate our Employee of the Month, Devin Longman. Hooray for Devin. Hooray. And hooray for our massive Big Buper. Double burger, double cheese, all the fixings, two for three bucks. The Left Side Drive-Thru would like to congratulate our Employee of the Month, Devin Longman. What's that? Take it off. How about the left side's world famous Big Buford? Made to order, now just two for three bucks. It's game day. Gear up with the best college football preview show in the state. Sun Sports and Rep Warehouse look inside the matchups, inside the numbers, and get you ready for all the action. Watch Rep Warehouse College kickoff. Fridays at 7, only on Sun Sports. College football on Sun Sports has been brought to you in part by your Southern Chevy dealers. Visit us today and find out why Chevy is America's number one brand, number one value. By Checkers, the official burger of the Florida Gators. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Third down for the Golden Knights at the Florida 10-yard line. Trying to get on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. Israel is hit, and down he goes. He somehow got free and throws on the run to Jackson. Jackson to the six-yard line. What a job by Kyle Israel showing some strength to pull away from the defender and then the presence of mind to complete the pass to Jackson. 
Well, the Gators have gotten pressure all afternoon. Now watch them break down the pocket, the little tackle end game, and then th there you see Clint McMillan not able to come down with the sack. You've got the quarterback wrapped up. You know, you don't need to sling him. You just need to hold on to him, let your friends get there and help you. When you start slinging him and he don't go down, that allows him to catch his balance and complete the pass. Israel throwing for Walker and overshoots his man, incomplete. Well, the Golden Knights unable to convert on fourth down, and the Gators protect their shutout with 5.43 left in the fourth quarter. And, David, the Gators have applied tremendous pressure throughout the ball game, and you have to be impressed with the quarterback from UCF because, <laughs> as we see, George O'Leary said, I don't want to hear it. But you, you, you must be impressed with the quarterbacks because the, the ability to avoid the sack and get rid of the football. When you get that much pressure on quarterbacks, especially big, strong defensive linemen, you should be able to come down with the sack. We only got two, but we've gotten to the quarterback probably seven, eight times tonight. And did you see at the end of that play another drop, Nat, in the end zone by the security guard back there? <laughs> that makes five drops tonight in the stadium. Florida handing it off uh, inside. Tebow to Mon Williams. And the freshman just picking up a yard or two. Florida with only 5-10 left. And now you start to peek ahead to next week uh, and the big one up in Knoxville against Tennessee. But uh, here tonight, the Gators perhaps Nat, have not found uh, a true go-to back. Deshaun Wynn has carried the ball nine times, but look how the Gators have spread those rushing yards around. And, and that's what it's about, rushing by committee. All you want to know at the end of the night, what was your rushing totals? And I think they're getting there because, you know, you got to realize that the slot guys carry the ball almost as much as the running backs. Mon Williams again gets the handoff from Tim Tebow, and now it looks like the, the Gators have just pulled it back, and uh, instead of running uh, their basic offense, they're just trying to run out the clock with only 424 left. Well, you don't want to embarrass anybody, and, and if your idea is you've got to get the offensive line some experience, running the football will get them the greatest amount of experience, as well as those backs as you start to search for guys that can run between the tackles, guys that can run tough inside. And uh, Mon Williams is getting his opportunity here tonight. Third down and 10. Tebow's throw is caught. And the Gators pick up the first down. Take Casey, boy. He hasn't been thrown too much, and when he gets a chance, he's going to make the, the most of it. Casey That's running over the defender. Marlon Williams finally stops him. He's like, you know what? I might not catch much, but I'm going to keep my, per my yards per catch average up. Nice soft throw. Gets the ball out there. Good adjustment by Tate Casey, and then just refuses to go down, picking up additional yardage, getting the Gators out of the uh, end zone, right close to the end zone. Now they've got good field position trying to run out the clock. Gators picking up the first down. Thibault, good protection from that second team line and throws a strike to David Nelson. And the Gators pick up another first down at the 43-yard line. Joe Burnett on the coverage for the Golden Knights. And it shows you how the mindset changed. You, you, you get out of the depths of your end zone and you got good field position. You go back to running your offense because you want to get Tim Tebow some throws. You want to get him a chance to get some chemistry with the receivers. Mon Williams is the running back. As the clock hits three minutes to go in the game, Williams, nice little step to the inside. There is a flag dropped as Williams picks up five or six out to the 49-yard line. Officials talking things over. And it'll go against the Gators. Florida looking to make some big plays tonight, Nat. And as we followed that story inside the game all night long, and you'd have to say they've made some strides here tonight with a 58-yard touchdown pass from Leak to Harvin. Nation Big on play. the offense, only six men on the line, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. That was the big play in the first quarter. The Gators have also had a 33-yard pass reception for a, a touchdown to Dallas Baker, a 28-yarder, a 25-yarder. 25-yard run, 28-yard run by Keystone Moore. 
So there have been a lot of big plays tonight out of that Gator offense. And, and that's what you're looking for. Here's a big play guy facing, finding some running room to the outside, and then cuts it back inside a defender to the 47-yard line. He's a nifty runner as well. Well, David, it's going to be fun around here for the next several years as you look at Percy Harvin. Now you look at Faison. Now watch this move. Whoop! Watch. Whoop! And then whoop! One more, you know. I mean, the guy is just unbelievable in the open field. We've heard Urban Meyer talk about it before. He needs 10 to 12 guys to run those wide receiver positions, and I think he finally has it. He didn't have it last year. He's got 10, 12 options this year at that wide receiver spot. No question about it. David Nelson, a couple of catches tonight. Here's the end around with Faison and the former high school standout quarterback from Tampa. Crossing midfield to the 48-yard line. Burnett makes the tackle for UCF. Clock continuing to run with 142 left in the game. And, David, you saw Jared Faison come right off after that last run prior to this one. He's a little winded because when he took the football that time on the inside handoff, he was coasting. A lot of energy when you make three or four people miss you on the same play. Debo rolling out. Shows a little burst of speed down the sideline he goes and then steps out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Tim Tebow has thrown for 81 yards tonight and has rushed for, uh, we'll get the official total, but it's about 60 or 70. Yeah, but I tell you what, Tim Tebow has got what you call a linebacker's mentality because he gets out there, you know, he had to think twice about stepping out of bounds, David. He, he looked, I got a block in front of me. Maybe I should cut this thing back and finally wisely said, you know what, I need to get out of bounds. Take less hits. 61 yards rushing for Tebow, 81 yards passing. And Chris Leak uh, was able to throw for 352 yards. The Gators have 630 yards in total offense. For a snap, picked up by Tebow, dancing around back there, and this time he's able to manage a couple of yards out of it with one minute to go in the game. How important that to get the Tebow this much playing time as you head into a big one next week against Tennessee, just in case you need him? Well, not only just in case, because there might be some plays that you'd really like to have him in because of what he forces the defense to do if you're trying to run that football up the middle. So getting him some playing time, getting his teammates comfortable with him back there, calling the snap counts, you know, uh, getting them out of the huddle, all the little things that you do in practice, but it's a different tempo come game time. Couple of mistakes by Tebow, but some wonderful plays. And a penalty flag. I think the 25 second clock might have expired. Nope, there was movement in the offensive line. Looked like the entire offensive line went except the center. He's right to the snap. False start on the offense. <laughs> Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. I guess I was right. He's on the offense. Everybody yeah. knew the snap count, but except center, backup center, Eddie Hopp. Well, UCF's got a big one next week against the University of South Florida, big uh, in-state rivalry. This UCF program, a program that uh, didn't go Division I until 1996, the year after the Gators won the national championship, UCF stepped up into Division I. Mon Williams breaking a tackle to the 35-yard line, and that will be the final play of the football game. Florida jumping out to a big halftime lead and then completing it with a 42 to nothing shutout victory against the Golden Knights of UCF. A gracious George O'Leary with some uh, obviously kind words to Urban Meyer. Probably something along the lines of you've got one great football team, coach. And Urban Meyer encouraging the head coach for the Golden Knights next week. Let's go to Steve Babbick with the coach. With Coach Meyer, Coach, uh, what stood out in this victory today? A lot of good things happened out there. Yeah, I think you can see we have a few playmakers, and uh, I think our defense. I'm glad they got a shutout. Shutouts against good teams are hard to hard to get, and that's a, that was a you know that's a bold team we just played. So uh, I'm very proud of the way our defense played, and I I kind of like with some of the athleticism we have on offense. Did you see more from your defensive line today that gives you uh, what yeah, you want? I think, you know, that's the front seven played a little bit tonight. From a defensive standpoint, secondary covered well again. Yeah, I got to watch a film. You know, I don't, uh, I just didn't see many big plays given up. Yep. Uh, but I think the combination of good coverage and obviously you get a little pressure up front with Marcus and Steve back in the lineup, that's a pretty good deal. 
Chris Slick looked very on tonight, a lot of good throws. Yeah, you know, the, the turnover has bothered us, and I, I, I got to go back and look, and it's just silly turnover. We take great pride in that. I know some of them were when the game was already out of hand, but still, we want to take care of the football. Going into the game offensively, did you accomplish what you wanted to see today based on game one? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's still who's our tailback. I can't tell you that. You know, Deshaun Wynn, I thought, ran hard, and Keystone Moore, those are our two tailbacks, so we still get a lot better there. Looking ahead to Tennessee. Played a lot of the young players. Yes, we are looking ahead. It's officially Tennessee week. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, man. All right, Steve uh, Babick with Urban Meyer, and he's got a lot of things to be proud about with his football team. Our play of the game brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. Here's the big play of the game, a 58-yard connection from Chris Leak to Percy Harvin for the Gators' first score of the ball game. Our Steak and Shake play of the game. Nat to... Uh, Explosive offense, a shutout defense. The Gators appear to be ready to head up to Rocky Top. You know, anytime you could put uh, six touchdowns on the board and, you know, you, you start out the first quarter and you really struggle, uh, but then to rebound. But what a great job by the secondary as well as the, the defensive line of just shutting out a UCF football team that last year uh, threw for over 3,000 yards and, and basically put up 28 points average. You know, so outstanding job by that Gator defense tonight. I give the credit to them. Now, Florida's defense a year ago ranked ninth in the country in total defense. I think this unit is better even than that one last year, Nat. Well, I, I think when you look at what they were able to accomplish, the Gator offense got 13 possessions because of the great play of the defense. When you get that many possessions, you're going to put up big numbers like the Gators did here tonight. But it'll be a whole different uh, situation next week up in Knoxville when the Gators take on the Tennessee Volunteers. But for tonight, Florida shuts out George O'Leary's UCF Golden Knights 42 to nothing. UCF will have to wait to another day for an opportunity to knock off a ranked opponent. They are 0 and 16 against ranked opponents all time. For Nat Moore and Steve Babick and our great Sun Sports crew, I'm David Steele. Thanks for joining us. Tune in to Sun Sports for the Geico Gator Postgame Show coming up next.